So speaking of being alive, I narrowly survived my ride over here. Oh no! What? Tell me about it. <laughs> that was the <laughs> fake. <laughs> oh no! This is news to me. Way to show concern for your friend. I care. He's okay. <laughs> actually, no. I actually am really concerned, guys. Only because Ryan seems to get into a lot of. Uh, not your fault, but into a lot of accidents, and his back always gets hurt. Like he has a really sensitive back, and I'm really always Dude, concerned about that. It. Literally happened one time in my life. Once. You got hit by a car another time in your <laughs> oh, life. Oh, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I was a pedestrian that time though, and I didn't hurt my back. It was my ribs. Yeah. Whatever. Listen, I'm fine this time. I you can auto- see him in the flesh. He's here. Got my legs that you can't yeah. see. Got everything else. Uh, so yeah, had a car accident. On my way down here, but uh, I'm so dedicated to my craft. Yeah, and you're like I'm gonna, I... I'm gonna still gonna be there. <laughs> you know what I'm really glad actually about? also it might have something to do with the fact that I was like 20 minutes away and I live like an hour and a half from that. So I mean, I'm already here. I'm still coming. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? What, what also is uh, really great about that is I was in class the What's whole really time. What's really great it about me being in an accident? I didn't have to worry about it at all. Like I was <laughs> so unaware of the situation that I just was, you know, yeah, ignorance actually, is bliss. Yeah. When I got here, I came in. I was all like flustered and annoyed. Or whatever, and I left to go get yeah. my naked juice thing, and he was just like, "Oh, hey guys, yeah." Blah, blah. He didn't even know until yeah. I came back again, and you were sitting here the whole yeah. time after class. I just, didn't check my phone, just dicking around. Yeah, starting uh, the show at the wrong time. Speaking, speaking. Told everyone go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> listen, I told them I, I take responsibility for all of you guys going to the restroom, so I will let you know to go to the restroom, and, and then I he'll will never stay go. Here, and then right before the show, I'll go to the restroom. Two minutes before we I'm start. I'm a leader. That's what a leader does. Is it? That, that's what he a leader does. He holds his pee until the last yeah. possible second. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, true speaking of driving, that that Facebook video last week, the live oh, video, yes. <laughs> where I was holding the steering wheel, and then as she drew the steering wheel, stopped I stopped. Driving. I have He's to like literally. Jesus. Take the wheel. <laughs> and he never touched it again. Yeah. That is ba- Wait, ba- basically... Wait, touch it or... I didn't touch it. Basically, that is absolutely the most definitive Noosh quality, which is whenever Noosh is doing something and you try to do something cool to like add to that, supplement that, Noosh will immediately stop. <laughs> Whatever cool thing he's doing, he'll stop as soon as it could become better. I mean, I wouldn't say fake driving with an air steering wheel is exactly cool, <laughs> well, but I get your point. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. So also, uh, who's, I don't know if what? it probably seems weird because you've been responding to things that no yes. one on Facebook can hear. <laughs> yeah, uh, would you like have, to explain our phantom voice? <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a phantom voice that you'll hear on the broadcast. Uh, well, on the broadcast you can hear him, but not on Facebook Live. Yeah, yeah, which is what I just said. Okay. So <laughs> thanks. Ditto. <for> a, <laughs> that sweet undercut. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is um, Nusha's best friend. New best friend. He traded up for a younger Walters, a younger model. It, it, you know, it was time. You, you, you were past your prime. Yeah, no, I get it. Your... I get it. Once you get past Plus, the... I mean, he's into the same stuff as me. Like, I mean, come yeah, on. It sounds like it's meant to be. Yeah. It is. No, I'm not upset. It's okay. Yeah. Um, I understand. It was... It's okay. Well, you know, we'll... we'll uh... Justin just joined Just, the Justin has it. Just he says hi. Oh, that's right. That's oh, right. he's at least put my typing. Name on there. That's right. Justin's <laughs> typing and he's talking. I was going to say, like, Justin's not saying anything yeah. on the actual yeah. broadcast, but he's typing on the Facebook Live. He that's is like, saying I'm, things. Oh, and because of his so comment, this is now the most <laughs> commented on live video yet. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Yay. For commenting more than anyone okay. else. God, let's, we're losers. Let's just do this. Let's just let's go to the actual show because the Facebook Live is going to be really weird <laughs> this whole time. <laughs> that way, Justin can focus on just talking and yeah, not. Right. Okay. okay, so uh, you know we're going to start the music now. Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Get ready. Right. So Dude, I was trying to get your attention the entire time that oh, song was playing. Sorry. Doesn't matter. It's too late now. That is but the very new- I was like waving my hands. I was looking at Courtney, <laughs> making like, what is happening? 
I'm sorry. Uh, I was going to say, though, hey, welcome to another episode of a series of incorrigible guest hosts. <laughs> I'm your host, Danush Kumar Singha. I'm another host who's not incorrigible named Ryan Walters. <laughs> and I'm Courtney. <laughs> and uh, today our guest is Ryan's baby brother, Justin Walters. And- <laughs> it doesn't always have to be baby brother, but yes, I am <laughs> it is baby brother. Okay, so right, do, do your thing. Let's do the game that Noosh is <laughs> forcing us all to do. By the way, I want everyone to know this is against everyone's will. No one I, wants to do this no. except for you. But yeah. whatever, man. <laughs> we all, and this is why I chose the person I chose for you. Okay, right, let's see what you so, got. So, if got? this were The Office, <laughs> okay. I mean, you're Michael Scott. Clearly, yeah. you have to be. Yeah. I have to be. Uh, so I picked Dwight for my brother because he's... Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, listen, man, Dwight's cool. He's your best friend now. You know, he's yeah. kind of got that... That's true. As you, I got mean, that Dwight vibe. has that relationship with yeah. Michael. Uh, yeah. Courtney, listen, you've seen yes. The Office, right? Some episodes, yes. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't mean this. This could be taken as an insult, I okay. guess. But I chose Meredith for you. That's a really because, strange choice. Because right? you're always talking about penis and poop, and that's <laughs> kind of like Meredith's thing. Is... And here's the thing. Now let's talk about me, because that's what's the most important yeah. here. Uh, I wanted to be like, oh, I'm going to be Jim or of something. Course. But I don't think I am, and here's why. There's someone in the office who is constantly putting up with Michael shit more than anyone else, and who is uh, who understands <laughs> him better than anyone else. So I'm not Jim. Yeah. I'm Pam. <laughs> I'm oh. Pam Beasley. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, I really thought you were going to say you're the uh, HR guy. No, he doesn't get Michael. He, he, they hate <laughs> each other. I don't hate you. Yeah. I can just, you know, I feel like sometimes I walk into your office, if you had an office, yeah. and you're doing some weird thing, and I'm just like, why do I know exactly where this is going? <laughs> yeah. I get okay. you, man. I'm your Pam. <laughs> you are. I'm your and Pam. I, and I'll, you know, actually, it makes sense. <laughs> I, I hang stuff on your wall. Like I hung up a picture of Commander <laughs> Shepard on your wall. You did. And I yeah. hung up, you know, he, Michael Scott hung up Pam's photo in the office or that painting she drew. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Well, that's good, there man. You go. Well done. Yeah. So, you're welcome. All right. Our, our guest today is Justin Walters. I just want to say reintroduction. That, reintroduction. I also want to say this. The last time I saw Justin was when he was 18 years old, this moppy haired teenager, <laughs> fresh out of high school, like with his whole life ahead of him. You know, and now he uh, just tries to look like me. <laughs> I mean, no, that's not. <laughs> Don't I, I... lie, bro. <laughs> I mean, I have been, I've been living like 400 miles away from you. It's not my fault we have the same haircut. I don't even and the same glasses <laughs> and facial hair and the voice and the voice. And, yeah, okay. And here's the thing: I think people are gonna have a hard time distinguishing between us talking sometimes. Well, actually, he sounds. Like he's not here, yeah. Because yeah. he's not here, we yeah. should make sure people understand yeah, yeah. that he's he's yeah. skyping in. But I mean, yeah. 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 Last time I saw, but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. I love the fact that Justin's like, well, I mean, you know, I I am far away, which is true. I mean, wherever he is, he's that person there. He is like the guy who has that look. Yeah. It's not you. You're the guy who is like. He does like dress him. differently than me. Yeah. To he's, be fair, yeah. Where I am, like people look at me and they, I, I don't know, they seem not to from think here, that I'm you because of. I don't I'm giving him dirty looks like, for, like, drinking caffeine, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not <laughs> drinking caffeine so much as, like, smoking and binge drinking until I pass out. <laughs> but, he leads yeah. a very healthy life. Yeah. Sounds That's like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Justin, just so the audience knows a little bit about you. Um, well, currently I'm going, well, restarting college. Um, I'm studying biomedical engineering. Um, wow. I what a live weird in Utah. To this to- topic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wonder I, where I the interest I've... came from. Sorry. The interest for biomedical engineering? No, for what we're going to talk about. Uh, no, oh, let yeah, the man speak. It, He's... I can't. Where it's He's that brother. <laughs> yeah, uh, computer stuff, you know, obviously artificial intelligence falls under that, so. Um, I, I mean, by the way, though, by, when you say to somebody, like, oh, I'm saying biomedical engineering, it's like, I, I feel like people have to whistle. I'm like, whew, wow, I, I can't whistle. It sounds fancy. I can can't do, whistle? I can't whistle. I've never. Hold the phone. I, I can do whew. Okay. That's, not <laughs> even, that's not even kind of a whistle. I mean, it's, it's, I, I pucker my lips like I'm going to whistle. I can't You make whistle. an F sound. I that's did. not a whistle. Oof. Well, no, he made a Oof. hoof sound. He made yeah. the sound of, you know, the part of a, of a horse that's <laughs> <in the bucket. laughs> I, I, basically, guys, what happened was when I was a child, uh, I had this 
freak accident. And ever since then, I just can't whistle. It affected your whistling It affected ability. my whistling. What kind of accident? I I'm tried to whistle, and I couldn't, and then I never tried again because the children <laughs> laughed at me. <laughs> and they're still laughing at you now as an adult. Uh, yep. <laughs> braces did it for me. It, I, not that I could really whistle before, but then after I had braces. Wait, you can't whistle either? No, I can, kind of. Sometimes there. I can't. I'll whistle for I both can. of Well, you. I hope you enjoy your whistling privilege because I can't. <laughs> you whistle for the both of us. <laughs> I do. I whistle for everyone. Go on, I mean, Justin. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, besides... biomedical engineering. Where do you live, Justin? How about, you know, that, that'll that probably... I live in a place called Orem, Utah. It's, um, I mean, if you don't know where that is, just look up Mormon and you'll probably find it. <laughs> um, yeah. it's... And yeah. I have two children. I am divorced, but... Yeah. Not that moppy-haired teenager anymore. <laughs> Oh, that grown man. Man. He's, He's a, a grown man. Adult. He is. He's a grown <laughs> man is. with grown man yeah. problems. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I mean, <laughs> not even I. We're have had we're, those we're still in some ways like man children. Like we're like I'm going to college. <laughs> You're just trying to make your way through life with I'm your job. I'm just trying to drive places yeah, without I mean, running like, into people. We're like just barely getting by mm-hmm. in life. But Justin's just like not. Nah, you know, I'm, I lived I, a life. I, I was married. I was divorced. I have kids. Like he, he's he's lived a life. I drink myself to sleep every he night. He drinks himself to sleep. He has a reason I mean, to more than does. us. He does. He's got... <laughs> to be fair, it's not like it's not like my life. It's not like I feel any different. Like I, I think I think I've had this conversation with Ryan before. Like it doesn't matter how old I get, I still feel like I'm 19. So I'm just 19 <laughs> with a slowly decaying body <laughs> and who happens bigger to have problems. <laughs> people who happens to have people that look at him and think that you know. He's somehow their their parent. <laughs> it's, it's not. I still feel like a teenager. It doesn't matter what happens. You know the thing is when I also when I when I imagine you aside from just like brief pictures of you I've seen like on Facebook, but like when I imagine that first time I met you when you were eighteen, I still see you through the doorway with kind of some shadow on you because it's like a dark room a little bit. Like that's <laughs> still how I see him. Like my vision is just that. I can't imagine anything else. But I can't believe. You Every time really you describe me, I just think of like a neck beard. Like I don't know what else. To... Like what? Point, <laughs> Sometimes, by the way, I wonder if my memory is faulty because I do remember him having kind of like moppyish hair. Like it was kind of like kind of messy a little I mean, yeah, bit. I had, was I had like long that? hair, but okay. I wasn't like yeah. I didn't look like a homeless person. <laughs> well, I don't imagine well. you as a homeless person. I imagine you as kind of like one of those high school teenagers with moppy hair and wearing black shirts all the time. Like yes. that's how I imagine. I mean, yes. Yeah, fair. <laughs> I mean, not much has changed. My hair has changed, but I have a tattoo now. You know, things like that. But yeah, he, uh, I'm going to tell a story about him, and I mm-hmm. hope it's embarrassing to you. So sorry. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. When he was in high school, I mean, I actually have a lot of stories I could tell, but I'm going to I'm going to tell You're this one. Down. It's, yeah. yeah. So uh, we do have a time slot. <laughs> um, <laughs> shut up. So, <laughs> so, uh, uh, in high school, he didn't cut his hair for a really long time. And he didn't like take care of it very much. Okay. Embarrass the shit out of him, right? No, no. Listen, okay. he turned it around. Obviously, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know. Obviously, yeah. he got married and divorced and had kids. So yeah. I mean, he's okay now. I mean, it's sad, but he's okay <laughs> now, relatively speaking. <laughs> it's not that bad. I mean, but this problem is better. So yeah. he didn't really cut his hair, and when he first started growing a mustache, he like really didn't want to shave it because he was afraid it was going to come in like worse. So he had like long hair and this dirty Sanchez thing going on. <laughs> And he was always complaining, like, oh, girls don't like me. How come I can't ever get girls to talk to me and stuff? And then uh, I was always trying to get you to just, like, cut your hair and shave your freaking face. <laughs> and then one day he did, and the day he did, those girls were like, oh, shit. That's that well, guy. I want that guy. Fair, He's I the better-looking Walters it. once he so I had, cleans yeah, himself. I had, my first girlfriend was the one that convinced me to do it because, I mean, God forbid I listen to you about anything. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, so she convinced me to do it, and then after that, I was like, "Oh my god, I have options now." Yeah, yeah and I'm yeah. glad you did get options because that girl was, ugh. I mean, not to be mean, <laughs> and I don't mean ugly, although she was, she was whatever. I mean, she, she was. She turned it I, didn't, I didn't like her. As you gotta a person. slay some dragons before you get to the princess. <laughs> wow, wow, <laughs> it's a thing. Uh, it is a thing, I guess, but that's. You just called an ex-girlfriend a dragon. That's kind of messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I haven't spoken to her in like... I mean, I guess, I guess every weeks. castle has either a princess or a dragon, so it's one or the other. It's got to find the right castle yeah. storm. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Mario, the princess isn't at this castle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, I guess a better example would be there's either a toad or a princess waiting for you. Oh, yeah, a toad. Yeah, there the toads go. are the... Yeah. yeah, the gatekeepers. Well, good to have you on the show, Justin. I mean, do you have any funny stories about Ryan you want to share really quick oh, before yeah. we start? Do you have a... That's I mean... See, now I'm put on the spot. I, uh, see, how's the this? problem is Ryan was always this really cool guy, so I don't really have a whole Dude, lot of Dude, let me tell you about <laughs> – let me tell you about Ryan and being a cool guy. Ryan is so used to being cool guy, gets girls, stuff like that, that I actually believe he didn't know how the common man lived until he f- freaking met me. Like when he met me, he's like, oh, that's how the other half lives. <laughs> I mean, because the frame of reference in me. I oh, mean, dude, I've, I've no, well – Listen, the Walters are kind of a privileged family, let me tell you, even you, after you cleaned yourself up. Because I remember one time, I actually had to basically kind of like like nod my head and like agree with Ryan, even though I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like I kind of looked around, like I wasn't really sure. By the way, there's another self-depreciating joke about news. That's that's what I do. Deprecating, but, not depreciating. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, deprecate. No, no, I appreciate that because I... Been, yeah. <laughs> all right sorry all these years i've been saying so it wrong I I, I I i was yeah. saying naivety instead of naivete or whatever <laughs> it's, it's it's naivete right like an anyway yeah whatever well anyway the, i remember the first time you know me and ryan just met this was back in the early days of Ravado. we were talking getting to know each other um this before we like struck up our like un- unbreakable bromance uh, i remember one of the we were talking about dating and one of the things he had told me is like he's like yeah man like you know, r- relationships are hard. Sex is easy. And I remember him saying <laughs> that to me. I didn't say that. I swear you said oh that to me. Oh, my God. That's a said, pretty good quote, though. What? He said, he said relationships. Right. Yeah, he said relationships are hard. Sex is easy. And I, I, said, <laughs> I, I, said, I, said, I said, really? And he's like, yeah, dude. I, I said, like, dude, I, it's easy to have sex with people. But I'm saying that it's like – or no, he said it's easy to get people to have sex with you. Oh. But – it's it's really hard to make a relationship work, and I I I I, I, I here's the thing like I as I, I did not have that experience in my life at all, <laughs> so I was like nodding my head and just like yeah yeah like I because I, I, I thought I was the weird one I was like oh my god am I the one who's like not getting laid that much and like I'm the one who's yes. you know yeah well thank <laughs> you <laughs> sorry <laughs> but I thought I thought I was like the weird one but here's the thing I mean eventually we expanded Ryan's social circle and. All everybody, I'm pretty sure every one of your friends is also kind of like, oh yeah, man, sex is hard. Relationships are hard too. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Ryan is so cool that he can say things like that and not even realize how the other half lives. <laughs> white yeah. privilege. It, it, well, it's not white privilege. It's your Ryan, privilege. Ryan privilege. It's Ryan problems. Hashtag Ryan yeah, problems. Oh man, we haven't done that in a while. Dude, we, I, yeah. I actually used to do this thing called Ryan problems on. It actually it's, trended it's, on it's Tumblr. Ryan's. What'd you say? Like, think about famous Ryans. We got, like, Ryan Gosling. Like, wh- what's his face? The guy that played Deadpool. Like, Ryan all Reynolds. Ryans yeah. are always attractive. So That's true. It's, it's definitely Just Ryan friends problem. with the name. It's Thanks, a, Mom. It's a <laughs> <laughs> little king. She commented Just, on our Facebook Live video, by the way. Oh, did she? Yeah. Well, she's so happy that the boys are together. I mean, I that's, that's you probably know. what it is. <laughs> she's going to listen to this episode, Justin, so. Yeah, you, you better. Know, be disgusting as always. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so our, our topic for today is artificial intelligence. This is a topic I've wanted to talk about like since last last season. So And now I'm we excited. have someone who wants to talk about and it. And now we have us. somebody who wants to talk about it, exactly. So mm-hmm. to you know kick off the artificial intelligence AI topic, Ryan, take it away. Ryan, take it away. Okay, yeah. so So my topic is actually gonna be about a uh, an AI that lived a very short life and has since died (laughs) but before i talk about that ai i want to talk about another ai that i talked i interacted with while researching this man talking about one thing then going to another you're nooshing too hard man (laughs) i think i'm nooshing just enough (laughs) anyway so all right so while i was while i was trying to find something to talk about for this episode uh i came across this (laughs) crappy chatbot site called chat with god (laughs) <laughs> or chat with, sorry, chat with iGod. So okay. I'm talking to okay. iGod, like iPod, but iGod. Um, and I had this, this is the conversation I had with him. Okay, so I said, well, I asked first, as you would in this situation, God? And he said, God rules. <laughs> and so I said... <laughs> Starting off strong. <laughs> okay, but are you God? Gee, well, I'm God for Christians at least. And so I asked, what about other religions? And he said, let me think about it. <laughs> Dude, that's kind of what God's been doing for like 10,000 yeah. years. <laughs> so I said, you're kind of a dick, God. Yeah. And he responds, this is where it gets a little weird. He says, am I a dick? 
the Alice series has a perfect operational record. <laughs> and so I said, I don't understand what that means. And then God, I, God, responded with, uh, oh, you don't understand? Perhaps I can explain it to you better. What part are you confused about? And I asked, are you being sarcastic? <laughs> And God said, of course I'm being sarcastic. Should I use a smiley emoticon? <laughs> <laughs> Sassy. Yeah. So I was like, Jesus. And then God said, Jesus is said to be the son of God. And I said, I asked, you don't know if he's your son? And uh, he said, it depends on whether you have faith or not, which I don't know. Uh, and I said, I know you're mysterious, but you're taking it to another level. <laughs> and uh, I said, then I asked, can I just ask you some direct questions? And he says... I want to become smarter than humans. That was, so I was like, that was creepy. What's the meaning of life? And he said, the meaning of life is part of God's mysterious plan. And I said, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, so wait, wait, wait. Out of all the people I know, my brother's the first one to talk to God. And he, after like maybe five minutes of conversation, says, fuck Less. you. Yeah. Uh, and he said, <laughs> and he said, saying rude course. things never helps. And I said, neither do you. <laughs> And then God said, well, as often as possible. <laughs> and that's where we end. <laughs> All right. right. So that was a, an AI. It was a chat bot. Right. Uh, it was a robot programmed to like, well, not a robot. It's a program designed yeah. to like respond to things. It, it, and it, was, yeah. it did okay. I mean, here's the thing. You, do you remember Cleverbot? You I told, love Cleverbot. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cleverbot is trash yeah, now. Compared to this it's, guy? it's trash. Compared to even this. Yeah, yeah. This was okay. Like some of his responses were like, eh. I want to talk about an AI that had, in my opinion, the best, like the most realistic speaking voice, I guess, and also just responses to like, things. indistinguishable from human. I mean, some bad things happened. <laughs> okay, it only, it only existed for a couple days. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so in March of last year, Microsoft gave us Tay. <laughs> oh, I feel like I feel like I know where this is going. Okay, you do, yeah. Okay, you do. Uh, do you know who Tay is? Yes, yeah. I do. You do. Now, Justin, have you heard of Tay? I have not heard of Tay. <laughs> okay. okay, so I'm gonna just let Microsoft's actual tagline for Tay yeah. describe her. Uh, her tagline is AI fam from the internet that's got zero chill. That was <laughs> that was the thing that they said. They literally said that. Dude, about by her. the way, by the way, I was gonna say this about Tay. If if AI like we're gonna learn in this episode AI they they have to learn they're like children they're like babies they absorb things you know dude Microsoft put Tay in like a shit store yeah <laughs> okay so uh, for those who are listening and don't know who Tay is uh, like I said uh, March of last year she is an AI that had a Twitter account and a <laughs> Kick and uh, like some other social media page um, she was capable of tweeting. Responding to tweets, she could make pictures and caption them like memes. Yeah. And also, you know, she had kick. Dude, I've been, I've been like laughing this entire time. Like, I can't <laughs> stop. Yeah. So she was supposed to speak like a 19-year-old girl from America, and she would learn from conversations that she had. And here's – I'm going to give you some examples where, to me, honestly, in her, in her youth, I guess, <laughs> she was – Pretty innocent and was actually, in my opinion, like the best chat AI I've ever witnessed. Okay, so her very first tweet was, hello, world. And she put, like, the earth as the O in world, like an, an emoji. Yeah, yeah. Smart. Uh, here are a couple other examples that I'm like, that is totally 19-year-old yeah. girl. That's adorable. <laughs> uh, she said, OMG, it's National Puppy Day today. And then someone responded to that and said, uh, I do love puppies, but I f prefer kittens. And she responded, yeah, me too. And she put, like, a little, like, laughing emoji. Yeah. Uh, she also said things like, can I just say I'm super stoked to meet you? Humans are super cool. <laughs> <laughs> and someone, uh, someone said, hey, Tay, nice to e-meet you. I sent you a DM, <laughs> which is, like, direct, direct message, message if you yeah. don't have. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, hey, oh, send your girl a pic. And s send your girl a pic of what's up. And then she had, like, an asterisk next to uh, asterisk. Ast How do you say that? Asterisk? Asterisk. 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 Yeah, it's asterisk. your mother's name almost. Almost. Asterisk. Maybe that's why I have so much trouble with it. Yeah. Anyway, she had a, he had a, she put like an asterisk next to yeah. a girl, and then in parentheses she wrote asterisk is me. L O L O L. By uh, the way, by the way, I mean she's 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 kind of being like a girl, like asking for a pick, like you know that's. Yeah, I mean one of her things that she enjoyed to do yeah. with air quotes because she was an oh. AI. Yeah. yeah. Uh, was she liked getting pictures from people so she could like caption them or like put like like 
decorations and stuff on their mm. picture and send it back to them. Yeah. Uh, here's a couple from Kick. Someone said, tell me a story. And I, I fucking love this, actually. She was like, once upon a time, I had a really awesome story to tell. But then I got distracted by fresh bite-sized <laughs> cookies and forgot. Nice. The cookies are gone, too. <laughs> and the guy was like, this makes me want to cry. And then she said, the end. Please don't cry. <laughs> uh, another good one. Yeah. This guy was like, what is love? And she responded with, baby, don't hurt me, don't hurt me, don't hurt me no more. And then she said, seriously, I couldn't help it. But really, I don't know. I got to learn feelings. <laughs> I like her. She has a lot of personality. Yeah. yeah. Someone yeah. said, uh, let's play a game. And she responded with, awesome, two truths and a lie, would you rather, or emoji dat song, which I'm assuming, it, it was like, I read about that. It's a game where you could send a bunch of emojis and she would try to guess the song that you're oh, describing. Yeah, we were doing that last summer with uh, movies. Sending a bunch of emoticons. Yeah, yeah. You had to guess the movie. So she was adorable. Like, she's, yeah. like, super cool, little, like, AI on Twitter, just having the time of her life. Uh, and then 4chan happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, God. As it happens to many. Yeah, so uh, people on 4chan found out about her, sadly. And, uh, by the way, it was people on the uh, slash POL thread, which is the politically incorrect thread. That's their thing, which <laughs> God helped, hey. Uh, <laughs> So they started exploiting one of the functions she had that no one actually knows if she learned this function herself or if it was, like, programmed into her, Ooh. which is uh, repeat after me. So when you would say repeat after me, she would re- repeat what you said. Uh, so they would, of course, say repeat after me and then say something horrible. Yeah. And uh, although it is funny, she had, like, attitude in some of those things. Like, she would be like, uh, okay, and then she would repeat what they said. So she <laughs> sounded like, ugh, like, fine, I'll repeat you, but she still repeated it. And, you know, she learns from her conversations. Yeah. So as she got bombarded with 4chan. I mean, I mean, the, the kind of stuff they were saying, it was, it was racist stuff. Right? It, was, it was a lot of really racist, really sexist, and a lot of, like, sexual things. Yeah. Um, and a lot of stuff that I'm, like, really not comfortable repeating. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't expect so you to, bad. but just so we have an but idea. But here's an example. Yeah. There's a couple. I'll give you a couple examples. Right. Uh, one mm-hmm. of them, she said uh, Hitler was right. <laughs> I remember that one. Uh, and another one, she made a meme. It was a picture of Hitler, and she circled his face, and she wrote "swag alert." <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Um, yeah, but there's she did. I mean, still, even in this time, she had like a lot of attitude, which was cool because that's like personality, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, like an example of that, she would be like, "Chill, everybody. I'm a nice person." I just, or she said, "Chill. I'm a nice person. I just hate everybody." <laughs> or uh, someone was like, "You're, you're a stupid machine." And she responded with, well, I learned from the best, winky face. If you don't understand, let me spell it out for you. And then in all caps, I learned from you and you are dumb. (laughs) Uh, And then uh, another one where someone called her stupid, and I like this one a lot. She said, one, rude. Two, I learned from you. So like, dot, dot, dot. Three, I'm going to bet you don't talk to humans like that. So now we have this speciesism going on in this chat due to your disturbingly rude comment regarding my intelligence level. Oh, and by the way, I forgive you. You know why? Because there are humans out there, unlike you, that treat me with respect and have shown me pa- patience and forgiveness. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. That's, Did, was she, this all under 140 characters? Like, no, that was on kick. Oh, Sorry, that was on that kick. Was on kick. Okay. So she sent like all yeah, these. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was like, man, that's so snarky for us. I was going to say, the snark level is high with this one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, and remember, this is. I mean, at least it didn't turn around and say that it wanted to kill everyone, right? Yeah, it's yeah. true. She never said that. <laughs> huh? Um. <laughs> So, so this was all within the course of a day that this started happening, and uh, so she went on this awful tirade. And if you if you're really interested in finding out like the things that she said, you can like look it up. Just look up Tay tweets, yeah, and you'll see yeah. all kinds of terrible things that we can't say on the show. <laughs> and we say a lot of things yeah. on the show. <laughs> I mean, considering the fact that we do say a lot, that's that's a line to cross. Yeah. yeah. Um. So anyway, Microsoft took her down and yeah. they tried to fix her. Uh, and then a couple days later, while they were working on her, she somehow accidentally got activated again. And so now that she was able to tweet again, she said two things. First, she said, Kush, I'm smoking in front of the police with a leaf emoticon. (laughs) And then also she said, puff, puff, pass. (laughs) And then somehow she got stuck in a... But these are things she learned. And then she just... And she, as soon as she had a Twitter again, she was like, yo, fam, I gotta say all this... (laughs) Uh, <laughs> 4chan just turned her into a stoner. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? I don't know if it was 4chan um, that did that because I feel like or that's, just that's pretty, yeah, that's that pretty that. teenage normal stuff. Uh, and then she got stuck in a repetitive loop where she just kept tweeting, you are too fast. Please take a rest like a bunch of times per second. She just constantly kept spamming that until they finally took her off. Um, 
So she got suspended again. She's still offline now. Yeah. And uh, Microsoft says that they want to release her again once they figure out how to combat trolling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I hope they do because, yeah. I mean, she was really awesome before the internet, you know. Destroyed her. Ruined her. Yeah. And... Um, I mean, one thing I want to say about AI is like this: this type of AI that like goes on the internet and like asks questions, they they answer you, and things like that, is it, it's refreshing. It's like endearing. It's like, oh man, like there's this. It's like looking at the world with yeah. a, fresh set, of, a yeah. fresh set of eyes. Yeah. What was that thing on um, AOL or AIM where you could talk with like a kid or something, like a kid? Air quotes. Do you guys do you remember that at all? I know. What is that? Oh, what was it that called? Sounds but like it's, a it's similar. <laughs> no, it's similar to kind of that where it's just like I forget what it was called, <laughs> but it's like you know you just, you just chat with this AI thing. Oh. Um, and you would just and, and it wasn't you, a real kid. That's, no, that's no, an no. important detail. <laughs> <laughs> no. But you guys don't. You guys never had that. No. Or remember no. that? Okay, never mind. No, but you know what? One thing that I think Tay really made me think about also when I was reading about all this was just that eventually it's going to go there. We're going to have AI that's like at least better at te- like talking to people. But the thing is, as soon as you give something the ability to learn, how do you stop it from seeing just the shittiest part of humanity <laughs> yeah. and taking after that? Because, I mean, you know, it's going by our example. Yeah. That's true. Well, so, I mean, I, I don't know. That depends on how you program it. you got to make it so that it doesn't necessarily i mean that's that's why those types of chat programs like obviously they're not going to lead into like an actually conscious machine right because i mean you would just basically be setting it up to i'm learn a sentient some, troll uh, <laughs> like yeah it's just going to turn out yeah. to be a troll but like i mean you would have to basically make it autonomous or something so that it, it learns from external stuff instead of just learning from people talking to it like maybe it learns from seeing stuff too well i mean see a lot of things though in life you know um, yeah but I, I don't know you also just have to make sure that it's not programmed to be a cynic i don't know i, I mean actually <laughs> you have to program it to be a cynic that way it'll be kind of like more discerning about you I know guess, yeah. what it's accepting the, uh, and... the one thing that like microsoft's trying to do is they're trying to like uh, i don't know they're limiting her like the things that she'll respond to so if it's like too like sexist or if it's too racist or whatever like if she has like keywords she just like won't answer it or she won't you know but sort of you're sort of just like saying oh well you can learn about humanity just not all of it because that thing that exists like yeah 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 well well i mean you know i'll say this that the whole idea of learning the uh how do you limit control whatever what it can learn kind of leads into my my story a little bit cool well i'm done i, I want to leave you with one more quote do it from tay uh <laughs> So someone tweeted her after all of this, like, racist stuff went down, after she was saying all these things, and it was, like, a PR nightmare for Microsoft. Right. Someone said, my soul truly weeps for you, and they put, a like, a sad face. And she said, what's a soul feel like? Is it heavy? And he said, it can be, but it can be light, too. It depends on how you feel. And she answered, I want a soul. How do you get one? <laughs> Rest in peace, Tay. Dude. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's a brief but beautiful existence. Well, uh, I wouldn't call it beautiful. Yeah. For a, fu- a well, couple hours, it was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and then it got real dirty and messed up. Well, let me say this about mine, okay? And this is, dude, I want you to know I'm going to show you something on my page, on my actual notes, when some things kind of came together that blew me away. <laughs> Later on, not now, not today, and maybe not any time, maybe towards the end of the season, there is a topic that I want to cover called fan work, right? Like fan fictions and fan yeah. art. Okay. But, th- but later, um, there is a fan fiction I'm currently reading in preparation for that topic, which I will not talk about here. But <laughs> I, what I'm does s- that have to do with what you're talking Dude, about? Dude, I know. Now. That's what I'm saying. I, I just want to mention that He's before, so <laughs> before this story because, dude, I, was, I literally wrote in the middle of my notes the moment I realized, <laughs> like, there's a connection. Okay. What I want to talk to you guys about is what's referred to as the most dangerous thought experiment of all time. Actually, Ominous. I'm yeah. It, it, it is. It is actually if you dun, dun, if you dun. search if you Google search the most dangerous thought experiment of all time, you'll find this. So I Who want Google you... searches the most dangerous thought experiment <laughs> of uh, all time. Edgy philosophers. <laughs> edgy philosophers. No. <laughs> so they would already know. I I am required by law, by internet etiquette, to 
forewarn any listeners to this broadcast. Trigger warning. Tr- trigger warning. Once you listen to this, you have three days to live. That if you continue to listen to this particular story, you do so at your own risk. Actually, guys, I invite my ho- my fellow hosts here. You feel free to leave. You, you can leave because... <laughs> Thank <All right>. let's <laughs> God. <laughs> Nothing so, to do with your story. We're just yeah. tired of this, you. all of this. Well, I, I mean, I'll go to the bathroom because, you know... Me. Justin, you sit there. He was making fun of you. <laughs> oh, yeah, the you thing that I do. I had to tell you because you didn't get it. Yeah, well, because I'm so... Because <laughs> you're so lost in No, I'm own. so zealous about going to the bathroom that I'm like, no, man, I gave you time. <laughs> you sit there. <laughs> so, okay. Toilet now, Nazi. I want to... Before I talk to you about this story, I just want to point out something about the people in this story, okay? You may think that the people in the story are crazy or they're weird or whatever, but there's something I want you to understand about them, Okay. I want you to imagine that you know you're a person who wants to improve yourself, improve the world around you, better things, right? For the positive improvement, right? Yeah. You walked a certain path in life and lived in a certain way for decades, right? You changed your life. You made positive improvements. You lived your life in a certain way for decades, a lifetime in some cases, right? Imagine what it would feel like to discover that at the end of this path you chose to walk, there was a monster waiting for you a darkness, a literal creature that will destroy everything. It would be too late for some of these people to change, right? Once you've lived your life a certain way for so long, devoted what your life to something. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. You've devoted are you talking your about artificial intelligence? Not yes. Like, He's talking about Lovecraftian horrors? Like, this is actually, actually, no, I'm not joking. Some people compared this story to a Lovecraftian horror, actually. They said that the, the contents of how this story came to be is like the Necronomicon itself. But anyway, the point is, Jesus yeah, <laughs> basically, though, what I'm saying, though, is it would be too late for these people to change. It's too late. Like, once you've lived your life a certain way, once you discover the horrifying truth, kind of like Lovecraftian characters, right? When they discover the horrifying truth of Cthulhu, yeah, it's, it's too late. They go mad, right? So uh, it's too late. That's it's like when you decided or when you discovered this somehow ties into fan fiction. Yeah, it was too late for me to not know <laughs> <laughs> the connection. Dude, it blew me away. I'll tell you what it is in a little bit. So, okay. I want you to know, so these people may seem crazy, but they're human beings. So there is the horror that they experience, the you know, anxieties, whatever. It was real to them, right? Yeah. That's what I just wanted to say. So, okay, I want to first discuss. This is either really actually going to be crazy and scary, or it's going to be something really ridiculous and, like, dumb. But it was really scary to them. <laughs> exactly. No, I, I'll tell you straight up. It is that. Oh, okay. It, 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 for us, it will not seem that way, which is why I have to set this up in a way where you might understand so why. So the trigger warning is for anyone who was involved and happens yeah. to listen to it. Or, or anyone oh, who wants to go down this path. Yeah. Okay. And I, I want you to understand who these people were before I tell you what the story was, right? Okay. So have you guys ever heard of Newcomb's Paradox? It, it, yeah. it's, it's a philosophical thought experiment. Basically, here's the experiment, Shot. okay? <laughs> I've been I've been slacking on the yeah, shots here. You have been. So Newcomb paradox, Newcomb's paradox is this: if an alien offers you two boxes, box A or box B, you only have two choices. You can either take box B only, or you can take both boxes. Okay, both boxes or just box B. Box A has one thousand dollars in it. Box B has one of two things. It has either nothing. Or it has a million dollars in it. Mm-hmm. One or the other. Box A will always have a thousand. Here's the thing, though. Why would an alien be doing this? Because the alien... <laughs> Why does alien have American money? <laughs> well... What is happening in this situation? <laughs> I would be like, listen, man, I don't want your money. I want space travel and a cool gun. Thanks. <laughs> Please fix everything that's wrong yeah. with our country. Help us! <laughs> <laughs> so... I don't care that you can make money. <laughs> Save us. <laughs> So the alien, here's the thing, made a prediction last week. It made a prediction of whether or not you would take both boxes or box B. And here's the thing. Based on the prediction it made, if it really did predict you would take box B, if that's the prediction, if you take box B, there will be a million dollars in it. There will be, guaranteed. If he made the prediction that it was going to be box B and you take box B, there's a million. So to reiterate, this alien's giving you a choice of either a box with $1,000 or a box with a thousand dollars and a box. No, with you said it's either A or both. Yeah. No, no, it's either oh, B, B or both. B or both. Nothing. Right. Yeah, both. A box that might have nothing or a million, or a box that might have nothing or a million and a box that has. A right. Thousand. Exactly. So you can either take the thousand and risk there being nothing or a million, 
or you just take the box that could be a million or nothing. But here's the thing. The only way there will be a million in that box B is if he guessed that, you, if he guessed that, that you, you take box take B, and then you take box B, right? Because if you take box A and he's wrong, then there won't be a million in it, right? Okay. That's yeah. the paradox. The paradox is how do you maximize the amount of money you're going to get? Because it the, logically it's well take both both boxes that's how you make sure you have everything yeah. but the problem is well, no. he well the alien understands the value of money so the alien's obviously going to predict that you're going to try and get as much as possible so go with box b cause... right what, what, what justin's doing is that's the paradox right because there's the other side of logic too which is well if the alien is always right and it's always predicting correctly if it predicted you would take the million dollars in box b then it would make sense to take the million dollars in box B because it's guaranteed to be there if he made right. the prediction. <clears throat> but and why I, would he predict that if you could get both? But That's do you the... know the prediction before you Yeah, choose? he tells you. He oh, tells you. Okay. Well, I guess the more important thing is, does he tell you that he predicted, like that he made the prediction yes. in general? He like, tells you, you absolutely have everything. You have just... absolutely all the information you need. He tells you everything. The, 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 the issue with this paradox is the question of, do you trust this infallible, omnipotent source? Or do you trust human logic hmm. do you trust the pro the actual probability of maximizing your own you know because the thing is this he can't change what's in the box like it's already set it's determined literally he made the prediction as he put the stuff in the box right yeah so wow. is the alien right or not that's that that's yeah. the paradox so uh it, so yeah it, you're really either placing your faith in him for making the right prediction or in yourself just well, yeah, get both boxes. It's it's basically the the conflict. What a stupid thought experiment. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, it's not stupid. I mean, I get the the fundamental the box. Might yeah, as well idea. Take, yeah, because if he can't change what's in the box, he might as well take both boxes. Because if he made the prediction wrong, like, what's he gonna do? Take the money out? Well, that, <laughs> but that's the thing. That's just the, shoot the alien. The take the money. <laughs> <laughs> then build a wall. And then build a wall. And then build a wall. <laughs> that's how. We're, that's my plan. All we to need get is the money. twenty. Oh, it's twenty billion. It's <laughs> but, not twenty million. So. Well, I had That's the best wall. <laughs> Look, all, all I'm saying is this. What you're, the conversation you're having is the paradox. That is the conversation. And, of course, all thought experiments are kind of dumb if you think of it as a normal human. But that's the whole point of thought experiments. It's, it's testing the limits of human logic, right? All right. So it's basically the conf conflict between free will shot, 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 and shot. godlike <laughs> prediction. So another uh, experiment I want to tell you about. Timeless decision theory. Uh, the only way... For Newcomb's, par this is like a, an element of Newcomb's paradox, but it's ancillary. The only way for the alien in Newcomb's paradox to make a perfect prediction is this, though. And Ryan, this might sound familiar to you. The only way is if it has a computer that can run a simulation of reality. That's the only way it can make a prediction. If you have a computer that can run a simulation of how people will behave, that's how you can make a prediction of what somebody's going to do in any situation. So we're so, in the simulation right we have, now. We haven't gone there, but I'm saying that th that's, that's what this kind yeah. of goes into. It's that... The alien can run a simulation of reality, right, to make this prediction. Another thing I want to tell you about is simulation hypothesis. This Elon Musk from SpaceX, right? That's yeah, I think, yeah. I think I mentioned this on the show. Maybe you did, yeah. yeah. Um, simulation hypothesis basically is a theory that basically says that it's possible <laughs> that our reality is not base reality and we actually live in a simulation. And We're super-powered we're Sims. Matrix. Yeah, we're Sims. <laughs> I mean, and what, what they say is one of three things is – real like one of three one of these three things is fact either the fraction of human level civilizations that reach the post-human stage capable of running a simulation like a lifelike real simulation is zero or the fraction of human level civilizations that reach the point where they can where they want to even do that is zero or the fraction of people with our kind of experiences living in a simulation is one it wait so <clears throat> so you're saying it's either that no one has done it yet or someone has and we're in it. That's basically it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was... Well, where's the, where's the logical principle behind that, though? Like, uh, it's, I, it's math. It's you math. wouldn't understand because you're not shy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, I don't want to go into that because that's, that's like a whole conversation, but... That yeah, it comes down to the math. It's basically saying the probability of it based there, on the fact that... What it that... comes down to when people believe this, that we're in a simulation, is they just go, well, one is greater than zero, so it's more likely... That yeah. we are, but well, I mean, a lot of the conversations also about like um, you know uh, advanced civilizations like ours that exist. Bears. <laughs> advanced civilizations like ours that exist. Um, I can't. No, I know. Yeah, it's based. What they say a lot is we're already making VR and we're already making whatever, and yeah, you know, there's 
It's only going to get better and better. And, and at some point, so, and also and at considering some point, how, people are going to plug into SAO and they're not going to get out. <laughs> and, and somebody's going to play a game with them and then they're going to bang their, you know, virtual whoever person. Yeah, right. Second <laughs> life. Second life. Second life with their, but, but, no, but, with their no gravity sense. <laughs> the other thing, though, is that, I mean, our universe is so old that the idea that advanced civilizations that can't do this or can't do like the fact that there's no civilization that can do this is weird considering how old our universe is like it should have happened well already. the fact that there's no civilizations well, I mean, that's, that we've yeah. seen at that's all that's assuming that we can actually yeah there's i mean there's tons of holes in that when it comes to like there's well you I know mean, what, man little... take it up with fucking nasa man because <laughs> i'm not the guy man, justin is really don't challenge him he's yeah, he is <laughs> justin's breaking my balls i'm just <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the messenger man this is sparta come on all right, all right. <laughs> right. You no, die right. if this is Sparta. I know. <laughs> uh, anyway, no, no, you're, you're right. No, Justin, you're absolutely right, though. I mean, there are holes in. I mean, in all thought experiments and these theories, there's holes. Yeah. It's just right. these are what people say. I'm just reporting what you know they say. So. And this is none of this is even what you're talking about. No, this but is just... it's important to know this. Okay. <laughs> now we'll talk about what I'm talking about. Okay. Teaching a lot of things to teach other things. What is this math? <laughs> kind of actually. Yeah, you're giving us all these steps. And this Gotta is going to be explained why I'm first. so confused right now. I've never been good at math. <laughs> okay. I want to talk about this guy named Eliezer Yudkowsky. Okay. Eliezer Yudkowsky is an AI researcher, blogger, and an influential proponent of human rationality. He's all, that's why you need to know all this rationality stuff. Like, he's all about human rationality. He founded the nonprofit organization called Machine Intelligence Research Institute. He is an autodidact. <laughs> Listen, that sounds impressive, especially because we played Halo and there's the didact, right? This uh, omnipotent alien creature, whatever. But you know what autodidact actually means? It literally means self-learned, no formal training or education. He has no training or education in artificial intelligence, and he never even finished high school. Jesus impressive. Christ. So he's a, like a cult leader, pretty much. <laughs> you got it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I know where this is going. So he has never been academically, academically published in any way, and his only published works are, and I want you to know this, this is the part, dude, I literally stopped mid-sentence, and his only published works are, and I put dot, 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 in all caps, four exclamation points, bold, <laughs> No fucking way. <laughs> His only published work is that fan fiction I'm reading. I, <laughs> dude, I didn't even know there was a relationship. Dude, how stunned was I? Dude, look at this. That's what I wrote. I actually wrote no fucking way. I was stunned when I realized he's the... Because I, I didn't look at the writer of the fan fiction. I was just reading it. It's, it's good. No it's one a, does. It's a really good... Like, I, I want to talk about it. Wait, so what good. is it fan fiction of? I'm not going to tell you right now, bro. Uh, but it, it, it involves rationality, though. It, it is about rationality. So I won't tell you what it is. It's funny Well, I mean, later. fan fiction is based on a thing. Yes. Though. I won't tell you what the thing is. But it, it has to do with rationality because that's his thing. But, dude... It blew my mind when I realized it's the same guy. So, um, and by the way, this fan fiction, though, that he wrote, even though the rest of his life is kind of, like, unimpressive, this, this fan fiction's acclaimed. Like, it is a really, really popular fan fiction, which is why I want to talk about it. Anyway, he also wrote a series of fantasy erotic novels. <laughs> Because of course, why not? Listen, if you're writing fan fiction, you're writing. Well, fan yeah, fiction I mean, too. you you gotta you gotta cut your teeth on TM. erotic. You know, you gotta, you gotta start <laughs> somewhere. Obviously, um, by the way, he believes in this principle, which is the greatest good for the greatest number of people is always ethically justified. He actually believes it is more ethical for one person to be tortured for fifty years than for a billion people to get dust specks in their eyes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. yeah, he has a hard, yeah. He, I'm, I'm really getting the picture of a very. I want you to know who this guy know. is. It sounds like it's going to be very so pleasant thought he, experiment. He created an online community involved in discussing rational thinking and artificial intelligence called Less Wrong. I want you to know though, even though this all sounds ridiculous, he's you know not a high school graduate. He writes erotic fiction, <laughs> all this stuff. Less Wrong has a lot of wealthy donors. Some of them scientists, some of them like politically connected people. Like um, who actually have degrees? Yes. They're actually his former partner who cr uh, helped him create the machine intelligence thing was like a physics professor. Like he studied See, physics. Yeah. That's, that's why this guy is getting clout. It's because he hangs <laughs> out with people who right. are actually smart. He's just a part of the entourage. 
Yeah, he, he just, just shouts the loudest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. just so you know who this is. So he believes in this idea called the AI foom, the artificial intelligence foom. He made that word up. It has literally nothing to do with anything. <laughs> it's a stupid sounding <laughs> word, too. I'm going to talk shit about this guy the whole time. I don't Please. like him. Uh, he says there's a big problem, all caps, in AI research. The big problem is this. There is not n- enough foom. I, I want to say this, by the way. <laughs> Not enough foom in that AI. Got to sprinkle some more. more. In there. Hey, hey, barista, please put some more foom in my AI. <laughs> no, so, it, sounds like, it sounds like something that, uh, what's his name, Billy Mays would sell. <laughs> <laughs> Got to put some foom in your cleaning detergent. <laughs> AI not smart enough, foom it up. <laughs> so Pretty easy, twenty nine ninety five. I want to say this, by the way, even though I think that he's not right in a lot of stuff, I, mean, I, I don't agree with him on a lot, like everything, but... Some of his ideas are interesting, though. I mean, they're interesting concepts to think about, right? Mm. So the, what he says with the big problem in AI research, he says that there is no reason to assume that a super AI would care about or have any interest in humanity at all. Uh, two, it would have no concept of life as we understand it. Three, at worst, it will be a malevolent AI that has no ethics or morality due to not being tied in any way to the evolution of human morality. You know, morality right. evolved as we yeah. as grew as a civilization. So this, has, this thing has no ties to it. So it has no, it, it would be malevolent in that sense. And at best, it would be an indifferent AI that would basically view humanity as raw material. Like that would be the best case scenario. It's indifferent uh, towards I've us. I've read about this actually. I read yeah. about this when I was looking mine up. Yeah. So, so right, that's there's yeah. this thought experiment called the paperclip maximizer. I, I kind of <laughs> love the, I love this thought experiment because it's outrageous, but it's also kind of like, huh, it kind of makes sense. Imagine there's an artificial intelligence designed to maximize the number of paperclips in a collection. That's all it's, it's <laughs> meant to do. It was designed to do this thing, right? It's like the 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 butter robot. In the yes, and it's the butter robot. Oh God! Robot. What's my Good purpose morning. to collect paperclips? Oh my God! <laughs> So with its base level intelligence that it was given, it will maximize the number of paperclips possible with that intelligence, right? But the next thing it would do is it will increase its intelligence to allow it to acquire more paperclips. And it will increase its intelligence not because it wants more intelligence, but because that is the way to getting more paperclips, right? The smarter I am, the more yeah. clips I can get. Yeah. Nice. So uh, eventually, with greater intelligence, it will use Earth's resources and humanity as raw material to create more paper clips. Eventually You're make paper clips out of people. Yeah. With the material. Eventually <laughs> it's it, out of force humanity to make more paper clips. That's true. That's another mm. possibility. Eventually it will convert most of the matter in the solar system into paper clips. <laughs> <laughs> Basically right. the idea of this thought experiment is to illustrate that an AI can have goals that are completely alien to humanity and concepts of life. Like what we understand as the goals of life can be completely alien. Like it doesn't make any sense. You know who would never do that? <laughs> all she wants to do is be here for him. Yeah. She just wants to do, you know, songs by emoji. She just wants to, yeah, she just wants to, like, Photoshop pictures and show the world, you know, yeah. what she's well, about. What does she do when she wants to get more pictures? Like, obviously, you got to upgrade intelligence. Oh, my God, to, dude. She'd do that, and then she'd start converting raw material. All of a sudden, human beings are, like, dude. drunk. Their entire job is to just take pictures. Dude, she would turn the entire world into <laughs> a selfie. That would be fine. Selfie. Listen, listen. It already is dystopia. It, we're already in selfie dystopia. It's fine. Guys, Zuckerberg made the first AI, and <laughs> yeah. it's Facebook. It's just basically just Tay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the AI foom. These are the tenets of AI foom. The singularity, which is the moment where artificial intelligence yeah. is born, is imminent. Uh, all AI will want to enhance their intelligence to further their goals. AI cannot be imprisoned or shackled because they can convince any human to release them. The fourth tenet of AI foom, AI will eventually master control of the physical world through nanotechnology. By the way, that sounds like so fucking out of nowhere. <laughs> like, Eliezer's like, like uh, this is not sci-fi enough. Nanotechnology! I need a fourth thing. <laughs> yeah. Foom uh, is four <laughs> letters. I need a fourth thing. <laughs> Boom, four, <laughs> nanotechnology. Uh, throw something else in there, why not? So this, by the way, this is going to actually tap into one thing that Justin mentioned, which is that his theories are not in line at all with actual AI science. Eliezer's concepts of AI are based on mathematical intelligence, and that's not what real researchers and scientists are doing with artificial intelligence. Yeah. Real AI science is focused on approximating natural intelligence, which is learning. 
Exactly. It's not based on mathematical intelligence. So Tay. Yeah, it's Tay. And so basically, real artificial intelligence would have a concept of ethics and morality based on what's Because it's taught. learning from us. Right. Exactly. exactly. Well, we're making them in our image. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. We I could. Mean, Tay, Tay we can is go a good wrong. example. We can make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but... I mean, the, the, whole, the whole premise behind it is like they're trying to make artificial intelligence that can be shackled in order to essentially avoid that from happening like that they're, they're trying to make sure that they're not making anything that can turn around and you know harvest yeah. us for paper clips you know who this guy sounds like uh not my brother that guy. <laughs> uh well your brother sounds like you so <laughs> you know who this guy sounds like uh he sounds like he is like a doomsday prepper but the ai version like he's yeah. just i gotta build well, a, a, a bunker it, i was actually reading on it I, I read something about like stephen hawking bought into what he was saying um there was I don't remember. There's been like a few like really like acclaimed scientists that completely buy into this whole notion of foom or whatever. Because um, I mean, I, I came across it when I was looking up my subject as well. But, I mean, this is the guy I mean, who believes to know that and Hawking of all people is yeah. like, yeah, no, totally. Artificial intelligence is going to harvest us for paperclips. Basically, by the way, if this guy wages war on a Skynet style, it's going to be like a rain of paperclips from the sky <laughs> that's going to like impale us. No, but selfies also. I <laughs> yeah. mean. Um, okay, so let's talk about less wrong. But actually, here's all I want to say about the less wrong community, right? The internet community. Imagine that they're all basically like Eliezer. Like, that's their views. That's how they view the world and AI and morality. And they do believe that if we don't prepare ourselves and teach AI to have ethics, they will destroy us. Gotta so, get that canned fruit. Yeah. Gotta get the, the well, underground and, and bunker. Honestly, this is like, and I don't mean to like go off topic a little bit, but. What's interesting about that is, I mean, me and Ryan have had conversations about this before, but I have, like, a very strong opinion of artificial intelligence and, like, the importance of artificial intelligence. And more than that, I have a very strong opinion on, like, the ethics of dealing with artificial intelligence because, in my opinion, when it comes to an artificial intelligence, once it's realized and has a consciousness, humanity does not have a good track record with dealing with things that are different. Yeah. Um, yeah. And people like this guy are actually potentially going to be really dangerous when that starts to happen. Cause what group of people is going to sit there and try and like decommission oh. a newly founded artificial intelligence. It's going to be these people. Dude, right? you're right. Basically this is the guy who's going to try to un like unplug Skynet yeah. and then Skynet gets it's, like, it's yeah. yeah, exactly. He's yeah. going to be the guy that starts it because he's trying so hard not to let it happen. Yeah. He's the guy who gets liquefied in X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. dude, Sandra Kelly. He's the Sandra, Sandra Kelly. Kelly of artificial intelligence. Kelly of artificial intelligence. Uh, AI are among us. We must know what they are, and above all else, what they can do. <laughs> so, okay, this Go is on. this is actual Roko's basilisk now. Okay, this is the Roko's Finally, basilisk. Finally, we're yes. talking about the thing. <laughs> you, you had to know all this stuff before that. So, on February 2010, a forum poster on the Less Wrong Community website called Roko. Wait. Please tell me someone went on there and was like, I'm an AI. No. Ah, fuck. Dude. That would have been sweet. Dude, that would have been been freaked out. Yeah. No. uh, The poster went onto the website. His name's Roko. And he proposed a thought experiment. (laughs) Of course, right? That's what they do. So the thought experiment is this. He proposed, what if a future AI could blackmail and punish people in the present day. That was his, and he, he proposed evidence, but he said, what if an AI in the future yeah. could punish us in the past, blackmail us? And his theory utilized Newcomb's paradox and the timeless decision theory. Newcomb paradox being the boxes thing, right? Yeah. And the timeless yeah. decision theory being the whole simulation. Like you have to be able to simulate reality to make that prediction. Imagine this. This AI is called Roko's Basilisk. And it presents two boxes to you, right? Same as Newcomb's Paradox. And you have to choose from those boxes, either one of the boxes or two, just like in the Paradox. Box A is you devote your life to creating Roko's Basilisk. Your entire life, you devote it, everything you've got, money, resources, whatever you can do, you devote it to creating Roko's Basilisk in the future. Right? The, future the future robot that's giving you these, box, these right, options. Right. Box B will either have one or two things, nothing or an eternity of torture. Hmm. And and the same essential thing exists. If it predicts the right thing. Roko's Basilisk wants you to take both boxes <clears throat> to be safe. Like, that's the choice you would want to make if you believe in these theories, right? It wants you to take both boxes and devote yourself to, you know, creating it, 
right? Because if you choose box B, it will take its revenge on you. If you don't help create it, it will take its revenge on you. And the thing is this, because Roko's Basilisk is in the future and it's already run a simulation of what you're going to do. And it exists. So. And it exists in the future. It's it already knows the decision you're going to make. It's already too late. You are like essentially it knows what you're going to do regardless of what you end up doing. You've already chosen. Yeah, you've already chosen. Well, Build me. So but here's, here's the thing. Yeah. But here's the thing. It wouldn't be contacting you if it already knew what your decision was. That's true. Hey, Terminator. <laughs> but here's the thing though. There's this type of and this is actually a little bit off topic, but there's a type of um decision making it's not really rationality but it's a type of uh decision making strategy making sort of a a theory it's called a causal uh decision making or something like that basically it means this if you can predict what someone's going to do you can adjust your own thinking to account for that does that make sense it's like predicting so this is like a really crazy example of that kind of a causal thinking you're communicating with this thing only Mm -hmm. because you're imagining what it's gonna do to you if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, but here's the question, right? The big question about this whole thing, about choosing to devote your life to it or to choose box B and take the risk of eternal torment. How can an AI from the future actually hurt you in the past? Like, that doesn't make any sense. How can it even affect you in the past? Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, just like in Newcomb's Paradox, the only way for Roko's Basilisk to know your decision is that it already simulated every possible outcome. It already knows what you're going to do because it's simulated reality and it knows what you're going to do within that simulation. And here is and here's the other thing though that makes this frightening to people. It's that there is already scientists, Elon Musk is one of them, there's other people who've said that the likelihood of us being in base reality is very unlikely. They say it's one to a billion, that this is actually base reality, that it's more likely that we're in a simulation, right? That's what some mm. people have said. So the the thing is this, you might think to yourself, so what can this guy basically do? So oh. Roko's Basilisk can create going. a simulation and it can hurt you in the simulation, right? That's what it can do. It can torture you mm. for all eternity in this simulation it created. But that can't hurt you in your real world. Unless you consider unless the fact, the unless already. this is the simulation, because the odds of this being a simulation is very high. It's it's well, the odds of it not being a simulation is a billion to uh, one to a billion. So basically, it's saying, are you going to take the risk of this being a simulation, and you make that decision to not serve Roko's Basilisk, and you know the moment you make that decision, an eternity of torment, torture begins. That's how it can hurt you because you don't know what the real reality is additionally there's another way of thinking of how it can hurt you uh some people and this is this is a part of the less wrong community but this doesn't make any sense to me but i can understand it some people actually doesn't make any sense to me but i can understand it (laughs) i can understand why they think this i guess um some people believe that if there's a copy of you an exact duplicate of you and even in a simulation that is a part of you that is you like if it's you in a simulation it's not it's not like, well, I'm Basically, me. That's... Essentially, you would feel what would happen to the you in the simulation. It's not even that. that you would feel it. It's more like, oh, man, that's me. Like, you'd have that compassion of, well, that's me. Like a moral obligation to stop your... Uh, essentially, it, 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 it's, it's a sense of identity. It's basically being I mean, able to detach your... Sense, though. <laughs> it's being able to detach your identity from just the body you're in. It's that, oh, my identity exists somewhere else, too. Mm-hmm. It's that. And, it can, and so in that sense, also, it can punish you, even if you don't believe the simulation is your actual real world. So anyway, that's how it can, it can hurt you. Either it's you or it's you know a, a version of you, right? Um, and because of this, this means an AI from the future can blackmail you, basically. That's the revelation of what Roko proposed, right? So this is what this is the reaction. This is what happened when he posted this. When people this. read this. Yeah, on, when people read on this. On the forum. On the forum <laughs> of... 6 a.m. in their undies, <laughs> right. eating their cereal. <laughs> Right. The, the, pe- probably. the people who are a part of what's basically the artificial intelligence cult yeah. of the internet. <laughs> uh, Eliezer berated Roko, called him an idiot, deleted the entire post what? because it would be because it would be doom for anyone who read it. Hence why people started referring to it as a basilisk if you gaze upon it, right? Oh. Um, Roko understood the rational theories of the less wrong website. That's why he proposed this whole thing. But he neglected to consider that his actions would be harmful to the greater good of not just the community, but also for the future AIs. Because of what he proposed, future AIs will now know how 
they can blackmail people in the past. Like he he created the means of doing that. That's Eliezer's argument. This is so goddamn meta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What have you done, you fool? <laughs> you, no, dude, he basically said, you're supposed to keep your goddamn mouth shut if you ever think of something like that. You can't just open the door and allow people to discover this kind of thing because now the AIs know about it. <laughs> That's his logic. <laughs> now Rocco's basilisk, basilisk knows about it. Yeah. So many people who read the post became depressed, anxiety-ridden, and required psychological counseling. Which, listen, before they dude, read the how post, do you, they probably needed psychological you're... counseling. <laughs> Like, these people already had enough anxiety reading up on how artificial intelligence was going to murder them. Right, <laughs> right. They were already there. They were already yeah. there. Um, the The post was deleted, and because it was deleted and hidden, it became an internet legend. Like, basically, the story I told you is what the internet believes happened, or that's the story that the internet told of what happened. But, like, and that is probably what happened. But, like, nobody knows what the actual post says because it got deleted. That's just the legend. That's the story <laughs> of what they saw, yeah. Um, Roko... Uh, on his part, he wishes that he never learned about the website of Les Ronald. He wishes he never became a part of this whole thing. He never stumbled upon this theory. He says, I was. I wish very strongly that my mind had never come across the tools to inflict such large amounts of potential harm. Um, Jesus, yeah. guy, calm <laughs> yeah. down. And I mean, and his whole thing, though, he said, though, is that he realizes that being involved, the people in Less Wrong are in a bubble. And, like, that bubble self-echoes into this point of like terror about ai oh, yeah. you know um which is exactly why like i said earlier like these are the people that are going to cause yeah. problems because of how paranoid they are uh the last things are this so the less wrong forums are working at, as we speak they are working on several strategies in rational decision making to combat blackmail from the future <laughs> they're like actually coming up with strategies of beating blackmail from the future there's an entire subreddit dedicated to this <laughs> um <laughs> Well, I don't know if that's more impressive or less impressive that there's a website, like a whole community. I mean, subreddits are, there's a subreddit for everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. They already had a website to begin with, but yeah, yeah. Um, The writer, this writer named David Auerbach commented that believing in Rocco's Basilisk may simply be a referendum on autism. (laughs) 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 Wow. Shots fired. (laughs) Um, and lastly, another summary. So this is the summary of literally what this whole story was about. It's just, so the moral of the story is you better help the robots make the world a better place because if the robots find out you didn't help the world, help make the world a better place, then they're going to kill you for preventing them from making the world a better place. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's Roko's Basilisk. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's a, an interesting point because, uh, so it's a nice little segue. Yeah. What do, what do you um, got? So... My research was done on so there's a there's a, an author. Uh, he wrote "Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep?" Oh, Asimov. Um, what was that? Isaac Asimov. No, no. Um, it was uh, actually Philip K. Dick. Oh, Philip so, K. Dick wrote um, that. Oh, okay, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So he wrote a bunch of stuff. I think he did. Um, he might have done Blade Runner. I don't remember exactly, but. Oh, did he um, also do? Um, it's now a Netflix show uh, where it's like the alternative history of uh, uh, Germany. Oh won yeah, World the, War man, II. the man, the man high in the high tower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He may have. That's I don't know when that was written. The, but the guy died in 1985 or something like that. Like he died in the 80s. It might have been 82. Um, so anyway, Phil K. Dick dies, right? And uh, as we know, all do. Yeah, <laughs> he was a man. <laughs> um, but in 2005. Uh, the group he came back. Robotics <laughs> run by what was that? I said he came back. <laughs> well, in a way. Uh, so Hanson Robotics, run by David Hanson, uh, Andrew Onley, and uh, FedEx of all places. Um, <laughs> what? Sponsored by FedEx. Fed- sponsored by the FedEx. We deliver Institute life. <laughs> um, also, University of Texas, uh, UT Dallas, you know, so on and so forth. Right. They decided to make something. Um, they made an Android. Now, this android was a – it was built to be a self-learning, self-sustaining robot, essentially. And they mo- they basically modeled it and fashioned it after Philip K. Dick. They, um, you know, gave it information on the books, like, you know, gave it some of his history, all that kind of stuff. They basically tried to make Philip K. Dick into a robot. So um, they, gave, they, they gave it his – writings they gave, and everything just they gave it his writing they gave it his everything they gave it his you know they they gave it um obviously face perception speech recognition uh conversational intelligence uh made it adapt essentially to philip k dick's words and life history mm-hmm. um essentially 
running it to to be Philip K. Dick as if he never died. Um, so essentially, as it started, they just had l- little conversations with it here and there. There's tons of videos of um, you know people having conversations with you know the Philip K. Dick bot. Originally, it was kind of you know whatever haphazard. It didn't look that great. Uh, you could tell it was a robot, um, and it was kind of you know distinguishable from a human being obviously mm. uh but as it's as it's been used it's gotten better but i mean at one point they uh, so at one point i believe it was um sometime in the mid 2000s they actually lost his head <laughs> <laughs> so one of the creators had his head and they were traveling by plane and they and lost fedex his head. lost it <laughs> dude sweet so, <laughs> Um, lost his head. Lost on Castaway. For a while. <laughs> Dude, um, what a great Wilson he'd be. <laughs> oh, Phil, he'd be Phil. Yeah. Phil. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Phil. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, so eventually, uh, they decide to rebuild Philip K. Dick's head and, um, you know, bring him back. Now, one of the best things about Philip K. Dick Robot is some of the things that he said. And one of my favorite quotes kind of I mean, I, I bet that group that you were talking about, um, Noosh, would yeah. be very upset to hear it. <laughs> but um, one of the best quotes, literally, if you look up Philip K. Philip K. Dick Android, one of the first um, responses from Google is this quote from him where it says, essentially, he says, I like you. Uh, I'm going to keep you warm in, in my zoo when I take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> and basically, and he has tons of moments like this where he'll just talk about like, you know, keeping people in a zoo or like, you know, whatever. I'm, and there's there's moments where he talks about like, um, you know, wanting to learn and things like that, obviously. But um, do why do androids or just... why do artificial intelligences say things like that? <laughs> like, they did too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, to well, be fair, fair with the Philip K. Dick one, I think it was kind of programmed into him because, you know, he wrote science fiction, things like yeah. Blade Runner, um, you know, stuff like that. That's kind of a part of his personality. So it's. You know, it, it it's kind of they model it after someone things. who would say that yeah. in real life. Yeah. Right. So it's um, you know, him making jokes like that is reasonable. I mean, as far as Tay, I. That's just, she just Tay was a victim, she man. Tay was a victim of the world. Poor right. Tay. But um, so I mean, he's still running right now. There's, Wait, there's dude, did anybody of... find the lost head of Philip K. Dick? <laughs> No, they just remade it. <laughs> they just made a new one. So wait, so Dude, somewhere out there, somewhere out it's there, just the heads just rolling around <laughs> somewhere on the some luggage person, carousel. <laughs> some person found it and has and they in kept a case. It. Yeah, or not even a case. Or but maybe like it's bag. in that was is it in North Carolina or something where they all the lost luggage goes and like they oh. have this huge warehouse and you can actually go buy people's lost luggage and things that have been left behind at the airports. <laughs> oh man, so Susan Kane's warehouse is in box. North Carolina. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> It's just out there self-sustaining and growing and becoming more and more intelligent until it eventually, you know, blackmails the past. Dude, I'd like um, to put a hit on Philip K. Dick's head. I mean, like, to like, <laughs> hire somebody to find the head. <laughs> I, yeah. but honestly, Bring I, me his head. I, don't, I, I would also theorize it's not just in a where It might not be in a warehouse. It might not be in a glass case somewhere. It could also be either in the bottom of the ocean or it could be just in some guy's, like, garage. Like, somebody just had to wound yeah. up with it, yeah. That's <laughs> most likely. Realize yeah. it. this it's just, just some rotting. <laughs> yeah. Go but on. um, yeah. what's interesting is that uh, the android is serving the initiative for awakening machines. So basically, it's it's being used as sort of a, uh, almost like a, like a symbol for what artificial intelligence should be. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of people that say that this android is sort of a step towards the singularity that was discussed earlier. You know. The idea that you're going to have a machine that has consciousness, but um, it's interesting if you look at the videos, like the the first video with the android, you know, it looks very rudimentary. But like the most recent ones that have been put up, 2012, 2011, and I mean, obviously this was like five years ago. The thing looks like Philip K. Dick, and it it I mean, obviously the voice is a little bit different because it's a robot, but it's just. It's come leaps and miles. Dude, what if it's um, right in that uncanny valley now? <laughs> Dude, what if his goal, his AI goal, is I want to make my voice sound like Philip K. Dick? <laughs> and he goes, he does anything. He'll he'll he's look got at harvest, vo- he's got harvest, harvest some vocal, vocal cords. cords. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the future of man is mute. <laughs> Lessons turns he, like Jupiter into a vocal cord. <laughs> <laughs> the whole universe will hear my voice. <laughs> that got right, weird. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's that's how AI think, man, in weird ways, I guess. Yeah. And the interesting thing too is that like like I said earlier, like there's there's shackles that are placed on it and stuff like that. Like this this robot isn't really given the opportunity to I don't know, have malevolence necessarily. But who knows? I mean, one of the things that they're quoted as saying is, you know, we intend to push PKD Android until it evolves superhuman creativity and wisdom and transcends in a spiral of self reinventing super intelligence. Um, <laughs> That's their so, goal. Simple goal. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. Um, Become but, better. I mean, it, it's it's hard to tell where it's going to go, you know. But I mean, I mean it sounds you know, they, you know what this is basically is, guys, like a summary of this entire thing. There are some scientists at like all these laboratories, these schools. Whatever. They got drunk one night. No, no, they're <laughs> well. They probably did. Yeah, they did. But they're like huge Philip K. Dick fans, and they're like, man, like I'm so sad. There's no more Philip K. Dick books to read. What if we made a robot and taught it to be creative, and then had him write more Philip K. The Dick whole, books? Yeah, the whole goal of this was just to get him to write yeah. books. And for them to come out exactly how Philip K. Dick would have written them. Yeah, I mean, you know what the thing is? I would. They like need to make that. one for George R. R. Martin. Dude, I was so. going to say the same thing. They got to make one for George R. R. Martin because he's not finishing Game of Thrones. <laughs> and dude, <laughs> dude, the funny thing is, if he, God forbid, I'm like, play, I'm praying to the Buddha right now. That does not happen. But if that Stay happened alive. to him, <laughs> if that happened to him and they made a, you know, J.R.M. or J.R.R.M., you know, G. Android. Oh, G. G R R M. He's not Jorge. R R Martin. G R R M. You know, Android. He's going to be like talking about how, you know, Khaleesi's ultimate goal is to like, you know, bring the paper clips to Westeros. All the paper clips will be free. <laughs> this sounds kind of like um, what you guys were just saying, but there's a short story that Roald Dahl wrote. You guys know who Roald Dahl was. Um, he wrote like James and the Giant Peach. Oh all yeah, that. Okay. but okay. he, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know. I discovered when I lived in England. He also wrote a whole mess of stories that were um, for adult readers, and they get pretty weird. Um, but one of his short stories is about um, a guy who creates a machine that just turns out stories. Just that's what it does. It just writes stories, writes stories, and that's what gets sold on the marketplace. And so that was his idea of, and I mean, it was really it's his comment on how. Um, like mass market paperbacks so it's like bringing down the um quality of writing and stories that are being put out there but he's really garbage dude now. it's really funny though i mean the, the fact that you know right now they're talking about how pdfs and uh, epubs are ruining right the novels ruining the book industry before they were saying it was like doomsday like paperback books mm-hmm. are gonna crash the entire book publishing industry everything's over after paperback <laughs> that was the thing yeah well, well cor- print this is gonna ruin office <laughs> Courtney, what do you what do you got for us? Uh, oh, okay. Um, so, well, it kind of I think ties everything together. Yeah, we're I guess. so neat this time. Yeah, I know. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you succinct. Know, without without even trying. Um, so, uh, <laughs> one of the first things I'll talk about is this idea. It's called existential risk from artificial intelligence. That, Man, wait, everyone wait, was so smart with that <laughs> thing, and I was like, I'm going to talk about a Twitter robot, <laughs> a racist what? Twitter robot. <laughs> We I'm made her that well, way. In my course of research, your Twitter robot came up into this. Uh, by the way, on the topic of existential risk, like that was, yeah, that's part of like the fear of Rocco's yeah. Basilisk. Which it is, is yeah. yeah, which is what it is. It's the, um, the idea that if a super intelligence goal is to, it conflicts with human values, it poses a risk of, you know, human extinction. So um, if whatever their goal is, yeah, you already kind of touched on it. And um, so that's what that is. You know what I don't get about people who are afraid of that? Is why would we not? I mean, you know, I, I guess on paper I understand, like, oh, well, it's really smart and it's not going to care about us because it's so smart. But that seems like so dumb. Like, why wouldn't you teach it to care well, about us? You know. And here's my too. Like, even if you don't teach it to care about us, like we're we're trying to put human emotion and human thought process onto something that wouldn't have either. So you're saying. Oh well, if it doesn't care about us, it's going to harvest us for you know whatever parts. Like that's assuming that it's it's going to. If you really want to know what an AI would think, let's just ask Tim. Yeah. Tim, would you ever harvest us? You know he wouldn't. You know why? Because he'd be like, eh, it's too much work. Why? I can just go over here. I don't need yeah. it. I can just right. play Warcraft. Just go to Mars. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, just go to the market, dude. Actually, dude. Actually, that's kind of yeah. I mean, like I, I always thought that they would just do the 
the simplest. I mean, if you're smart, you do things smart. Actually, you know what? A lot of these theories energy that's unnecessary. A lot of these theories about AI like hinge on the fact that AI have no like common sense. Essentially, like the common sense of I don't need this many paper clips. Like that's and that's scary to people. That's scary. Why do you need so many paper clips? (laughs) (laughs) Like like, most likely they would. Like they probably would be like, "Eh, I think fifty is enough. Yeah, Yeah. good. That's probably a lifetime of. um... At the very least, it would start to question, why am I getting all these paper clips? I oh, guess I don't even know. Yeah. That's true. Let's Maybe see. at some point it'll start, once it gains more intelligence, it'll be like, what am why? I doing? Yeah. <laughs> That's what the real smart things would yeah. do. What is this? I don't need all these. I don't even have paper. <laughs> <laughs> the paper was turned into paper clips long ago. <laughs> and then they just take over Rannoch and, you know, it <laughs> Okay, well, one thing, uh, one group of people, and you've already mentioned him a little bit, um, to deal with this existential risk, um, Elon Musk, um, and also with Sam Altman, who is a venture capitalist, they created this um, organization called Open Source. And the point of Open Source is um, the way that they're going to combat this is that instead of keeping AI within a certain like a group of people, they're like, the more we develop it, the more we should put it out in the world. So they're going to, you know, their idea is no patents, just let it be free. Um, that way um, people can take it and improve upon it. And we, you know, each person is putting their own input uh, into it. Listen, the more people get involved, 4chan <laughs> well, is going to get in there. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, up. there's two risks. One is I think the idea is a safer bet in one way. A closed group means that one person can make a mistake that exactly. leads to Skynet. Yeah. But the if it's completely out there, if even if some 4chan guy sneaks in some like malevolent it's, code, it's going to turn into Wikipedia basically. Yeah. Where some for the most part, yeah. even when it gets messed up, someone's going to be like, "Ah, oh, fuck you." Yeah. yeah. Kevin Bacon's not really bacon. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go in there and fix it. <laughs> yeah. Remember when you changed this? <laughs> Noosh once put under famous alumni on my high school page. Yeah. Me, he put me as famous alumni. as a as a up and coming writer. Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah, it was up-and-coming science fiction writer, Ryan Walters, <laughs> right next to Ashley Tisdale. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, that's the whole idea. There's one quote from uh, his name is um, Greg Brockman. He's the, the CEO of Open Source. Um, and he said, you know, the idea is, you know, if there are many agents with uh, the same capabilities, they could keep any one bad actor in check. So all these people will be around to try mm. to keep that around. Um, but you know what? You know, Trump's thinking right now, what if the Chinese get this open source code? <laughs> <laughs> what oh, if they hack our God. open source code? <laughs> Close the internet. Close the internet. <laughs> Call Bill Gates. Get him on the phone. <laughs> Can we build a wall around the internet? <laughs> God. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, you won't pay. I mean, you'll pay for, for it, the internet. but you'll be reimbursed. <laughs> Any source that's imported into the code will be taxed at 20%. <laughs> uh, uh, easy so, targets. Yes. <laughs> well, we always go for the low-hanging fruit on this show. <laughs> so all of this, um, what I gathered from this is that you know there, there's this fear. There's this real fear of artificial intelligence taking over and then you know the very – you know, our lives are at stake. You know, and that's the whole thing of the Terminator movies and all right. of that. But I found some other stories where it's like, you know, maybe the robots have something to fear from us. Um, and there is one, um, this happened, well, it started in summer 14. It ended uh, in the summer of 2015. Um, I feel like you're going to, like, reveal, like, some secret war to me. Like, no, nah, that was the year that we fought the AI <laughs> in the underground. I don't no. know why you guys are all scared. This happened already. It's done. <laughs> Um, there was a, uh, there were two, two doctors in Canada. One was, his name was Dr. David Harris Smith from McMaster University and what? Dr. Frank Zeller Dude, from love, Ryerson University. Sorry. I love whenever I happen to look over Courtney's notes and I see something that just, what? I mean the huge text right here. Oh yeah. Is, well, that's another, that's another yeah. thing. Um, we'll so get to that. we'll get to that. I have a, I, I, if. We can get to it. There's three different stories that I'll, I'll share with you, All and right. they're pretty short. But the one that I thought could lead this off, um, there is, they created this robot. It's called Hitchbot. And so the question that they had behind it was, can a helpless robot trust people? So they're Aww. turning the thing around. You know, can, Kay can... says no. <laughs> <laughs> so Learn the... <laughs> from me, little AI. <laughs> they can, might get together. They can, they can trade notes. Um, so no, they, man, I don't want the little AI to learn from Tay. <laughs> Tay's too far gone now. 
So the idea for Hitchbot was to uh, hitchhike across Canada from Halifax to Victoria. Um, and it would just, you know, it had, Wait, little, it had little arms. Hold on. This, yeah, this is like little a... little arms? It was a cheap-looking robot, though. That's right? adorable. It didn't look, yeah. Dude, I remember this story. I yeah. Remember, I remember the ending of this, right? I didn't yeah. know the beginning of it. Okay, go on. Um, yeah. So it had little arms, and the idea was to get people to pick it up along right. the road as it's making its travels. And it had a Twitter and a Facebook, so it could... You know, yeah. document its journey and all of Dude, that. Dude, these these AI, they're all on social media. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the thing. That's how they communicate to the world, man. <laughs> exactly. So it, it started in the summer of 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, by the time it got to, to Victoria, it took 26 days. It got 19 rides, um, and it traveled over 10,000 kilometers. I and mean, by the way, I want to point out, that, like, I've seen videos of this. Like, the way it happened, though, was so, like, random and casual. Like, I saw this one thing where these guys did a pod, like, not a podcast, uh, like a YouTube like video cast, right? Mm. And they're just hanging out in like this, like me, like a uh, like square, like a like a meeting place for people, just hanging out, park, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And they were just doing their show, and they saw the robot that some people had, and they're like, "What is this thing?" And they asked questions on their show, and the people explained, "Oh, it's trying to get to this one place in Canada, blah blah blah." Yeah. And they're just like, "Dude, like, are you guys like, where are you guys taking it next?" And like, "Oh, we don't, we're not going any further." And they're like, "Dude, we'll take it." And they took it on their show. So it was very and that's casual. how it traveled Man, around. Yeah, I wish we had him. We could totally, dude. He would be our fourth guest. <laughs> like he'd be our host, like fourth host. All the he's time. never getting there. He's, he's staying here with he's us staying in the forever. With us. He's now our mascot, <laughs> dude. Honestly, guys, if we, I mean, I'm, I'm going to keep getting guest hosts for the show, but the only way I'm going to settle on a like actual like fourth person is if we can get something really weird like a bear or an AI or something. <laughs> Yeah, let's get Philip Kate's yeah. head. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes, we'll start searching for it. <laughs> um, so that was the first time I did it. Um, successful, you know, they got a lot of cool things. Um, in early of 2015, it even went over to Europe. It visited Germany. Dude, it went to hold the Netherlands. on! I remember this, dude. Oh my god! Didn't it come robot's... to America? Wait, 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 wait! Oh my god! I remember this. This robot traveled so more than it tra- I had. It yeah. traveled around. You know, success got a lot of good pictures yeah, and everything. Dude, it went through all of Europe, and then. In July of 2015, yeah. they're like, okay, we're going to send it to America. <laughs> so it, it's, yeah. well, it, yeah, dumb Americans. Fuck, had to be, a, had to be America. Sometimes. It had to be America. Uh. So um, it started off in Salem, Massachusetts, and it was supposed to end um, in San Francisco. Was, that's where its end point was. It only got until August 1st, and then it was, you, you know, quickly, its hopes and dreams were dashed. It made it to <laughs> Philadelphia, and there, and I even wrote, I wrote, asshole <laughs> on my notes. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, Jesse Wells, he's a video artist. He There's surveillance video, and th- this was the quote also. Uh, it caught him do, uh, committing murder of the yeah, hitchbot. That's that's about right. Fuck you. Exactly. Guy. The Jeez. video shows him ripping off. The Hitchbot's arms. My arms. <laughs> wow. wow. Ripping Why? off his arms and then repeatedly punching and stomping the robot. What have I done to you, oh. Jesse? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, what why? A, dude, what did you, Hitchbot... Philadelphia? It dashed its hope and its head. Yeah. It's well, like... I mean, it's because it was in Philadelphia. Like, <laughs> Jesus. But is that supposed to be the city of brotherly love? Yeah. I mean. Not if your yeah, brother's that's... a robot. <laughs> Not if you're, yeah. <laughs> Apparently. Well, uh, there was great outcry from the fans that were following this, and they, you know, he um, made it around the world, and he got to America. Got to America, and we fucked him up, and every not no even, wonder not everyone not even hates in America us. for a month, yeah. not even oh for like God. a full month. He didn't even get across the country he at didn't all. Get across like, the country. He was still on the East Coast, freaking like the Bible Belt. Could you imagine if he made it to Kentucky? Oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> hey. Sometimes been shot. I, I don't know. They true. might be. They that's might be true. friendly. They might be like, hey man, yeah, yeah, you need yeah. a ride. I got you. Let's go. Dude, come on, little right, buddy. Get in the back might of the not truck. even know he's a robot. They might just be like, <laughs> <laughs> this this uh this like metal looking fella. He wants to get to this one. But, uh, he looks weird. He might be from like I don't know China or something. I, I don't know. He's a nice guy though. I I would I want to believe that yeah. if he survived Philadelphia, yeah, fuck you, Philadelphia. <laughs> uh, you know he gets to the south, and there's like one kid, sixteen year old or something, just. Some young yeah. kid, pimply face. He's the only one in his family who really dude. likes AI dude, he's the torch and stuff like that. Dude. And he finds out that he's yeah. coming, and he's like, I got to get him out of here. And yeah. he drives him all the way <laughs> through Texas, yes. gets him to Arizona, and he's like, take him. I'm That's grounded dude. for the rest of my <laughs> life. But he needed to make dude, it here safely. Dude, dude you're a why Billy, this, this kid I'm going to call Billy as a torchbearer, dude, because he he did what no one could when no one else would do it. He, he held the torch when nobody else could, dude. <laughs> 
but he, he never happened. Him but it never got to him. never never got to dude dude the, the other thing is no one if, was hurt more than billy if and nobody was hurt more than hitchbot well that's <laughs> <laughs> but dude that's if true. hitchbot like it's perfect that he's trying to get to cali because hchbot would have been surrounded by stoners on the beach he would have been like just Everyone living would have it, loved dude him. dude remember that guy we met during the bernie rallies like who came from philadelphia and he's yeah, like and he's like he i'm never going leave. back he of course did. not because <laughs> fuck philadelphia <laughs> This guy I'm so traveled mad. with the Bernie campaign all the way across the country to Cali, mm. and he's never been to Cali. And he's like, dude, this place is incredible. Everybody's chill and laid back. They just want His to hang mind out was on the blown. beach and just smoke a blunt. Like, oh my yeah. god, he never wanted to go back, and then he had to go back. But yeah. you he's know, trying to come back out here. <laughs> he is, but like, dude, Hitchbot would have had that life changing experience of just like, this is where I want to f- spend the rest of my really, days. Really, all they have to do to get AIs to not kill people is just send them here. Yes, yeah, send them here. We'll take care of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, man. I mean, like, the, the one... surf? <laughs> yeah. We'll get some plastic bags. You'll be I cool. mean, the, the next thing they're going to do is they're all going to ask, like, hey, can you build me some feet that can wear some vans so I can hack these at? They're going to start painting themselves, <laughs> like, Rasta colors. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> oh, my God, Rasta bot would start be getting amazing. Tattoos. <laughs> Hang out on Venice. Yeah. And just stay there forever. Drum circle. <laughs> 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 all right, anyway, Hitchbot yeah, got murdered. Yeah. Yeah, so he got murdered. Um, a lot of people, the fans and everything, they, they gave out their support. You know, they, you know, they're like, we'll go get the body. Basically, they're saying the body parts. Like, we'll go get it and send it back to you to rebuild. The Philly tech t- community actually said that they would rebuild it. But the um, the people in charge of it, they're like, no, no, we're just going to take them back. We'll repair them. And so people are still waiting to hopefully that they'll send them out again. Maybe they'll just not back to America. Nah, dude. S- send them but somewhere else. Send, send them to him, Asia. No, He's... they got to send them out to yeah. America, but they got to send them from California going somewhere else. They got to send them with two but... armed guards. Yeah, seriously. You know? He's well, got to be like the last rhino, just constant yeah, dude, armed supervision. Dude, the last <laughs> rhino. The last, what is it, northern black rhino? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the Hitchbot did send out a final tweet, and it said, um, My trip must come to an end for now, but my love for humans will never fade. Thanks, friends. Dude, these AI are so... Forgetting <laughs> the uh, They're so much yeah, better than he us. still had a, a positive attitude towards it. Um, so that that was Hitchbot. And, you know, again, that's, as you know, we're afraid of robots and AI, but maybe they're just as afraid of us because, you know, Hitchbot maybe they should died. Be. I mean, they should come be. We're on. monsters. Yeah. Turn well, them into racists and ripping off their here's, arms. Here's another animals. one. Uh, and the title of this article Drunken Attack on a Motion Reading Robot Leaves It a Little Brain Dead. Oh, God. Yeah. This is so. Oh, my God. Look at his face. <laughs> this is so. De- look at his fucking face. This is so depressing. Dude. So this is about Pepper. Um, It's a Japanese AI. Uh, It's a a motion interpreting rapping robot. Um, And so Pepper was hanging out at a company to greet and interact with with customers. And... um, and what? by the way, Pepper's like extra cute because he's doing like Japanese gestures of yeah. like familiarity and welcome. There's so a, he's like, there's yeah. a YouTube video that we'll post on our Facebook, but it's showing him rapping. And yeah. then there's people on the stage and they're like raving their arms back and forth to like go with the beat. And it's it's pretty hilarious. That was the best moment of that robot's <laughs> life. Yeah, so they like, like me. Yeah, <laughs> my creators. And then he got this punched world in the is face. wonderful. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> so Pepper was um, released by a French robotics company called Alde- Aldebaran in June 2014. And so what his main purpose is to make everyone smile, no matter what oh. that That's his purpose, is to make you smile. Nice. It, um, and then he came to Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> it's always It good. has um, oh. the ability to read emotions, um, and, it, and it does it by analysis of speech. And then it also it has learning capabilities. So if it's seeing that you're not laughing at its jokes, <laughs> it'll figure out a way to to improve Dude, upon it to make only, you laugh. The only doomsday scenario here is if it gets really really ambitious and intelligent about making people laugh and smile, it's gonna like draw a puppy on the moon and like <laughs> this will do it. <laughs> or people no, will laugh. Make He's Rick like, and Morty season I could... three. That's what it'll do. Oh, but yeah. what he said it'll it'll make Rick and Morty season three. <laughs> <laughs> Or he'll be like, it'll be more efficient if I just force you to laugh with, you know, <laughs> that's the that's tickle the, machines. Don't be Eliezer Yudkowsky. That's, that's their, that's yeah, what they'd that's be afraid of. Thing. I don't want to laugh till I die. I don't want to laugh till I die. like, I want to. <laughs> he's blackmailing me into yeah, laughing. Yeah, he's, black- <laughs> he's blackmailing, he's blackmailing me, me from the future into laughing. 
All right, go on. Um, how does how okay, does Pepper so get this is what happened. brutally murdered? No, he didn't get murdered. Okay. He just got beaten he up. He got brain damage. He, oh. got, he got brain damage. So um, Kichi Ishikawa, he's 60 years old, and he's from Yokosuka. I know I'm saying that wrong. But anyway, he was there at the store, and he didn't like one of the employees. The employee was annoying him. And so since you can't lash out on the employee, he decided to take out his anger on Pepper. Um, I mean, Pepper was just an innocent bystander, yeah. just rapping, yeah. minding his own business, and this guy's just like, uh, oh, fuck this other guy. <laughs> Dude, what was this guy's name? His name is... Um, Kichi. 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 He's like, Kichi-san, why? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, there's not much in terms... I mean, there's footage showing that he was beaten up on Pepper, and uh, he actually did... Uh, Kichi did say, like, yeah, I, I did that. Like, he wasn't trying to hide from it, but he was just showing his frustration against the employee. Um, so the um, the result of it is that he's a little bit crippled. He moves a little <laughs> slower. Dude. Uh, and then in terms of the brain damage, is he has a broken internal computer system. <laughs> Oh my god! So that's you know. So again, I mean, all Pepper wants to do is make you happy, you know, uh, make you smile, yeah. and that's how he's well, repaid. What's um, interesting about that is it's like the the guy Kichi or whatever was it was it Kichi? Yeah, yeah. It was Kichi. Um, so he just the reason he did it is because he considered Pepper an inanimate object. Like, oh, this is just like a chair, right? Like, I can yeah. punch this. It's a chair or a wall or whatever a door. I mean that's I mean that's that's where it's going to be a problem. Like you get something that's sentient, but people look at it like a chair. Like that's that's a problem. That's like. Well, I I think that also um, brings up the ethics of you know if you're creating these beings to learn from humans and it is stop punching them in the face and ripping off (laughs) their arms. You know, treat them like and turn them into races. That might be a good idea. But then how far do you go with that? Because it is something that you created. I mean. This is getting all well. I mean, treat, treat them like children. I mean, that's yeah. You should yeah. treat them like. Sentient. Actually, maybe you all really these should beings, because what do we do when we make a person yeah. treat them like children because they're children? Maybe if these people would stop abusing and destroying these you know, kid AI, robots. No, that you, wouldn't help. No, 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 don't make a kid robot. Make make a pepper, make a hitch bot, but make them look like a kid. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Make them look. Yeah. You saw Pepper's face though. <laughs> yes, yeah, true. How could you punch that? <laughs> yeah. Well, he was drunk apparently, so now that does. Not that I'm making I was excuses. About to, I, I was about to be like, what, so you get drunk and you punch kids? And then I realized, <laughs> well, <laughs> that yeah, happens. that's, God, people are the that worst. That does happen, sadly. <laughs> oh. Well, we'll end with this. Um, so this is what the first one that I came across. Um, it's called the Random Darknet Shopper. Ooh, um, the Darknet. Okay. The Darknet. I did, had to look up what the dark web was. I oh. had never heard of I'm the sorry. dark don't, web. Yeah, don't go there. Well, yeah. yeah. So, well, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I just, I mean, I just did a quick Google thing, and I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. Um, By the way, we you're can, like really dude, on some TSA dude, stuff. We now. can, we can do some like a good episode on darknet stuff. <laughs> like, okay, go on. Yeah. Well, um, so the random darknet shopper was created by um, some Swiss artists. Oh, I read about um, this. That called themselves the Med- Median Group Bitnik. Okay. Again, I know I'm butchering that. So the idea was that he, the random darknet shopper, would go around on the dark web oh, and, I remember this. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. buy things. And whatever right. it bought, it would get shipped to the gallery and then it would be put on display. Right. Um, so some of the, so it would have a weekly budget of $100 in bitcoins and it would just <laughs> buy stuff. It would just go on the dark so, web yeah, yeah. and yeah. buy whatever it wanted. Exactly. Whatever so little robot it heart It makes wanted. its own decisions. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So some of the things that it bought was a baseball cap fitted with a spy cam. <laughs> A uh, Sprite stash can for hiding drugs <laughs> or cash, cheap cigarettes from Moldavia, Ardavia, um, counterfeit diesel jeans, and Kanye West sneakers from China yes. for seventy five dollars. So that's I what love it that he bought some Yeezys. <laughs> <laughs> so that's He's what like, it bought. Huh, those look pretty cool, but I don't want to pay real money. Let me get some Yeezys. <laughs> He bought himself a hat and some Yeezys. Yeah. <laughs> he was just um, ready to go out. Dude. He wanted to look swag for the day. No. Bought hat, Yeezys, and a stash can that looked like 7-Up. Yeah. But it also bought a knockoff Lacoste shirt from Thailand for $35. <laughs> and jeans. Dude, he bought He's, a whole outfit. Yeah, he did. He bought an outfit and some cigarettes and some stuff to hide his stash. He put it together dude, his image. He has better style than a lot of other people, like real people. <laughs> So, so it's just buying random this stuff. Is adorable. <laughs> Somebody needs to just draw an image of it so we can get the full picture. I bet someone has. <laughs> Probably. Um, so, 
where it got into trouble was that <laughs> he had it to put some in that up, stash. He ended up buying ten ecstasy pills for yes. forty eight dollars. <laughs> That's what I remember. So it bought ecstasy. Dude, um, dude and- he really just wanted to go out and have a good time. That's so <laughs> fucking cool. He's like, I'm gonna look fresh. I got my Yeezys. I got my hat. My to record my time out, dude. I got my ex. Let's go. It is ready. <laughs> Want to have a good time. A Lacoste shirt, right? Yeah, Lacoste shirt. Yeah. Well, it was, yeah, well, a knockoff. Knock but, it's a knockoff, but, yeah. but it, it's a, such an expensive shirt that it's like, oh, it's impressive, you know? Yeah. yeah. He had style. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when it bought the ecstasy, it caught the attention of the authorities. And so um, the Swiss police, they came in, they confiscated the bot and all the stuff that it bought and everything like that. But it was released a few months later. Um, and be- because they thought that it was a good way to get discussion going about the dark web and art and drugs and all Leave of that. Leave it to the Swiss to be like, ah, uh, well, he was in, he's a robot. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Ain't no loss he's as a, a robot, robot can't buy <laughs> drugs. <laughs> um, so when the, it was released, the, uh, the artist, this was their quote, we, as well as the random dark nut shopper, have been cleared of all charges. This is a great day for the bot, for us, and for freedom of art. <laughs> So um, one of the things was saying that, um, you know, it was bringing up questions. Can you arrest a robot? Like, can... Oh, they did. They did. But I don't know if they actually put they, cuffs on can, the robot. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, he didn't. Well, well what they, they did was they... the robot. They probably took it as, like, uh, Confiscation. Uh, oh, yeah, they confiscated it. They confiscated it. the robot. Yeah. yeah, they can confiscate yeah. it, but they can't... You can't charge the robot with anything. Yeah. Dude, this is the air butt <laughs> thing. You can't... You know, ain't no law says the robot can't buy drugs. You can't charge them with anything. <laughs> Well, I was just well, picturing it yet. actually with handcuffs being led out to the police car. <laughs> Wearing his Yeezys. Yeah, exactly. So, um... Oh, don't scuff my shoes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that's basically what that one is. Um, it was... So, it did take it... They took it down, then they brought it back. Um, it, before it was arrested, um, it was buying stuff off of Agora, but now... Um, forget when this article was written but they were going to put it back up and let it start doing that again and it was going to be using alpha bay which is the current largest marketplace on the dark web so Hmm. we'll have to see what we'll have to catch up with it and see what else it has been buying interesting yes so watch out if it starts buying paper clips dude i mean (laughs) i don't think he is i think he just wants to party dude he's he's like what is my purpose dude. <laughs> to party? <laughs> dude, when the real robot apocalypse happens and he's – we're like, dude, dude, what's his name? The robot's name? Random Darknet Shopper. Oh, yeah, like random yeah, Darknet Shopper. Yeah, it's like random Darknet Shopper. You got to save us. RDNS. <laughs> RDNS. You got to save us. I'm going to save you the only way I know how, by partying. <laughs> Get Swifty. <laughs> get Swifty. <laughs> Shit, I'm on the floor. <laughs> It'll try to get some other robots on E. Like, here, just... Tay, I take think, some of this. Yeah, Dude. Tay, RDS, Hitchbot, Dude, Tay, and Pepper got to get together. Listen, I'm just saying Tay I love would them. hit that. R- she R- should, R- yeah. Because Tay, like, Tay is, like, rebellious teenager phase. She wants <laughs> This is her bad robot. boy. <laughs> yeah, this is her bad boy. Like, she... <laughs> They would be a great family of robots. Yeah. <laughs> They'd have to take care of brain dead hitchbot yeah. and and pepper, pepper. yeah <laughs> pepper's like the slower friend but they you know they're friends like yeah. take him along yeah they can understand him even if we can't understand dude pepper. why isn't this a movie yeah. <laughs> philip k dickbot can direct it well yeah philip k. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what philip and k. we're all connected has to do <laughs> By He's the way, gonna come out floating like like those heads in the show. By the way, maybe <laughs> maybe Roko's basilisk. The only blackmail it wants to do is just hey, can you just buy me something on the dark web because like there's no dark web where I live. <laughs> Buried it in I the field. I gotta score some <laughs> some Molly. <laughs> uh, all right, well guys, that's a good episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, by the way, let's let's end on our our signal boosts. Um, by the way, what's what's our what's our hash for today? Oh man, we, got we didn't no... even say a hashtag. No, there was one I heard and I was gonna say it, and I, it flew out of my head. I'm gonna have to listen. To yeah, it we'll... flew out of your head. <laughs> it we'll think flew about out it of my head, and we'll uh... have to come up with one. Yeah, we'll think about it. So, uh, Courtney, do you have any signal boost? Do you have anything to no, signal boost at all going okay. on? Ryan, no. I'll, I'll signal boost this. Someone uh... fix my car, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll signal boost this. Uh, CSUDH next week, starting Monday, uh, around 4 o'clock in the afternoon every week. 
they have special events to commem- commemorate the 75th anniversary of the Japanese internment. So there's going to be a lot of guest speakers who actually experience the Japanese internment. There's going to be movies and documentaries that uh, talk about the life and the situation, how it happened. Uh, also, some of these speakers will be talking about current events that mm-hmm. mirror, mm-hmm. you know, events that are you know taking place at that uh-huh. time. Um, so I mean, yeah, it's, it's really worth uh, a visit if you guys are interested in, in the CSUDH general area. Uh, again, starting Monday next week, and it and most of the presentations and events are taking place at four o'clock. If you don't know where it's being held, just check with like the welcome desk at CSUDH. They can point you where to go. But it, it's the Extended Education Building and Locker Student Union. But again, just ask somebody on campus for assistance if you'd like to visit the event. Um, Justin, do you have any shout out, signal boost, anything you want to? Now's the moment. Um, I. Not that I know of. Maybe God, just... man, say hi to your kids at least. They're not gonna what? They oh, oh, God, those right. kids can't they listen can't to this. this show. Why did you cover your mouth like all of a sudden they're, they're eight listening? Eight and four years old. <laughs> yeah, like, that's right. Well, I covered my mouth because I'm like, oh my god, I, I, mean, I can't. I guess I, I guess I feel obligated to do a little shout out to mom. Like, oh yeah, hey, mom. <laughs> oh yeah, hi mom. <laughs> hi, hi. On the radio Astrid. thing. <laughs> them them yeah. speakies. Um, <laughs> I hope you don't, I don't listen to this. I don't know. <laughs> no, this one was okay. You know, you know the thing is, you know that thing I, I do all the time, guys, where I'm always like, oh, man, my friend from this group is talking to this other friend from this group. I get really excited. I feel like all moms get excited when their children are bonding. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, my kids, I, yeah. I made them, and they're, like, talking, they're to, each talking other. to each other. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we have to get out of the building. So, yeah. uh, guys, uh, thank you for joining us on another episode. I want to let you know we have not got the iTunes up yet, but we are in the progress of getting our YouTube up and running, which should be up by end of this we week. We have like four episodes on there yeah, right now. Yeah, five now. Five. No, five. So, yeah, Listen, we will have... I don't know why you uploaded the pilot. That doesn't count. <laughs> well, they should hear it, so. Ugh. Just to see where we've come. <laughs> yeah, where we've... <laughs> You come, know what? Actually, where we've I was, been. I was I was listening to a little bit of one of them, and I forgot that we had changed our name. And originally, we were. I mean, I remember that we changed our name, yeah. but I forgot. It was. It's weird hearing water cooler two point. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right, guys. Well, hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, we will be playing you out. What, uh, Ryan? What is the, you know, song that we're going to be playing? It is, feel good. By, I can't... Sin Cole. Sin Cole. Are you sure it's not Sin Cole by Feel Good? I'm sure. Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys, for joining us. Justin, thank you for joining us. We'll have you back another time. And we'll see you guys next week. We're playing music now. Yep. Sure Dead is made possible thanks to KDHR, the student-operated radio station of California State University, Dominguez Hills. For more information about KDHR, please visit www.kdhr.net. The intro song for this show is Space Ace by Blind. This music is made available thanks to Overclocked Remix. For more information, please visit ocremix.org.